Welcome to Occultist Radio, radio for the higher self, with your hosts, Vicki Adams and Jimmy Darling. All right, all right, all right, we are back for another week. I turned the headphones up too loud and everything just went wee! And uh, everybody just uh, here just uh, squealed at me back. <laughs> so we, we have a great show this week. We have yet another great show this week. And uh, what we've got is we've got, uh, we've actually got a great show. It's a, We're doing a little controversial. We, we keep hitting really big topics, really, really hard hitting topics, intense topics. We're doing... Uh, uh, well, we have we have uh, Miss Mina, it's a pleasure, uh, actually here with us, <laughs> uh, not on Skype, but like face live. to face live. That live thing, I enjoy that face to face thing. People don't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were going to have you sit out front and just uh, <laughs> Skype you on your cell phone, and I could just sit up front, just talk to you back via text. <laughs> <laughs> But we do have a great show tonight. We have a show that's going... We're going to cover some um, um, uh, BDSM yes. knowledge. We're going to cover sex magic. We are going to do some... can be a little bit more intense in this show. <laughs> Vicky's going to talk to us about orgasms. Yay! Yay! Big fan! <laughs> <laughs> As she turns the color of her hair. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> She's like, wait till we get out of here. <laughs> wait until we're on break and the mic's off, you're dead. Yeah. So, uh, really what we're going to do is we've, we've, we're going to um, we're gonna start it out with a song. Uh, we're going to do Swin's Flesh Fiesta. <laughs> to set the tone. Of, of the show. Hi, everybody out there in the uh, chat room. We, we appreciate everybody coming in. Embryo and uh, Arcatunis and Hunter and Garrett and Rusty and, and Free Spirit and everybody out there. So let's, uh, we're going to get you guys started with Flesh Fiesta. We're going to come back and we're going to talk to Mina all about all about this lifestyle because um, it's going to be a, it's going to be a great combination because of all the ceremonial and ritualistic work that you guys do and yes. and and how it all can play in to the sex magic exactly. part. Exactly. Well, and before we get ahead of ourselves, let's go ahead and go with uh, Flesh Fiesta by Swen Plowright. Love this song. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> and we're back. We're having too good of a time here. Way too much. That's what happens when you put too many people in this room. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what happens when we put you in the room with us. Ta-da! Ta-da! Well, it happens when you have three women in a room together. Yes. <laughs> that's what happens when you have three people in this scene in the room. Ex- ah. Oh. So you can have three women. Oh, please. You can sit there and point to yourself really silently. They can say, no, it's not me. You're just a psychological you can, you one. Can, you're yeah, physical. you're the psychological you're all one. Mental. Oh, no, come on. She's got, she's got bondage tape. Oh, you have one. <laughs> I love it. It's like, you know what? I can now, walk out of here right this now. This is not about me. <laughs> this is about our guest. This is about our guest, damn it. I know, because you know what? G's going to get on there and go, oh my God, control, delete. We can't get that out of our mind. <laughs> control, delete. All right. Is he on? Yeah. Okay. Love it. <laughs> Love it. So right. so we're gonna we've got we've we've got Miss Mina here, and mm-hmm. who's also known as uh, Dada Von Dolly, Dada Von Dolly. And the sadistic leather nun. I think yes. that's my favorite stage yes. name it's of e- yours. It's either sadist rubber nun or sadist leather Although nun. I like Mistress Mina. Yes, mm-hmm. <laughs> actually, it's very innocent. <laughs> yeah, and then you talk to me, and it's a whole different situation. <laughs> and then you see me, and you go, "What's the? There's nothing mysterious about that. That looks like an ass whooping coming." No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so now we want to cover. Uh, uh, we're going to cover B. Uh, and the reason why I chose to do BDSM, uh, we chose to do BDSM on a sex magic show, mm-hmm. was because of the ritualistic nature and the control. Whack the whack the, the, the uh, microphone. Aww. Anyway, uh, to, because of the ritualistic nature and the ceremonialist nature yes. of the whole uh, BDSM uh, scene, and um, now I know that there are there are a lot of um, people out there, and they just they just throw BDSM. Mm-hmm. And and then and everybody and goes. throws it into one little pocket as if it's supposedly just one thing. It's multiple facets of dynamics just put together in one phrase. Right. Exactly, and it's those who who's and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. You know, we, we've known each other for a while in the scene. Ever, ever. almost. <laughs> she, 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 the dust and dirt. Dirt. <laughs> Since Jesus was a lad playing with a ball in the street. Yeah, I think I threw it in the street so he could try to get hit by the car. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. <laughs> Oh, there, there was no such thing. Exactly. <laughs> Bring the carriage. Bring the carriage. And the horses. And the horses. Have the mules run faster. Have the faster. mules run faster. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> now, BDSM is a type of role play, and, uh, and, and it can, it's, it's both a role playing lifestyle and a lifestyle. Yes. Yes. Uh, choice between two or more individuals yes. who use their mm-hmm. experiences of pain and power and psychological. Uh, manipulation and, and, and power and emotional and emotional to create sexual tension, pleasure, and release. Mm-hmm. That's almost the definition of sex magic. Right. Yes, absolutely. And the compound acronym BDSM is actually derived from the terms bondage and discipline, mm-hmm. uh, dominance and dominance and submission, mm-hmm. and sadism and masochism. Yes. And of course, there's all sorts of little things like that. But before we get, you're going to give us a whole definition. Of all of them, mm-hmm. and, and, and try to clear this up. But before we do that, oh, <laughs> okay, Mina, yes, Mistress Mina, oh, I love when you do that. <laughs> okay, so why don't you tell our lis- listeners a little bit about yourself? You know, mm-hmm. your background, how you came into this, mm-hmm. what what is it that you do, you know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Well, I've been in the lifestyle and active for thirteen years. Um, actually my whole adult life. Right. Um, I've educated myself along with other individuals who are already living the lifestyle or partaking in it on their own time since I was in my teens. I do suggest you to be, of course, a person of consensual age in order for you to participate in these type of lifestyle games um, because they are not just games. They're extremely serious. Mm-hmm. Um, the 13 years that I've been involved, I educate in workshops. May they be private or public. I also uh, been a leather lifestyle uh, representative for several years. I was Miss West Coast Olympus Leather for uh, three years. So I represented the West Coast of the United States. And I travel abroad educating um, not just being a person giving two says, but also being a physical representation, a representative of multiple lifestyles right. that you don't have to necessarily be one or the other, but you could be a plethora of. Right. Um, my position, I'm a psychological dominant. 
who's also a sadomasochist, which means I like to inflict as well as receive physical um, impact play of some sort. Um, I also am an individual who puts a lot of my concentration in medical, psychological, and physical bondage. May it be uh, encasements and mummification, may it just be wrist restraints or being bagged or sacked, or it could be psychological bondage and me just telling you that you can't go do where or be in certain places or stances based on my say and due to the trust and interaction individuals they do as needed. Mm -hmm. um, I continue educating myself because there are so many types of not just stanchions but there's fetishes too. Some people may not be into the whole DS or BDSM facet of that. They might just be completely centered on a material or a part of a body or a certain type of thing mm -hmm. that is completely outside of the individual or the person itself that it's on. There could be a man that'd be interested in a woman wearing um, latex, but not the woman herself, right. just what she's wearing. Um, my background, I'm a, I'm a rubber fetishist. I'm also a leatherist. Um, I also have a household of my own, which are um, dominants and subs, slaves, and some who just particularly are sadomasochists themselves, that um, through their own personal consent, they decided they particularly want me to be the individual in charge of their physical, mental, and emotional well-being while partaking into this lifestyle. And uh, I also educate couples and individuals as well mm -hmm. in, the same, in their different plethora of dynamics that they're interested in. Right. That's pretty... That's pretty cool. I try my best. That's pretty full on. Yeah. It is full on. It, it is. It, it, but you live, you, and, you, you and, live it. And, I mean, I'm a 24 7 and as they consider it. And it's a huge responsibility. It is. I mean, when you think about, I mean, everything that you just outlined. It's hard. I mean, you, you are guiding, nurturing directing you know individuals yes it's you know some of these individuals are two times my age some right. of them just turn of age right. um, I have individuals who play as children and they're older and younger than me I have individuals that they don't even speak or talk they just want to be an object and they just want to zone out and my place is to treat them as what they want to be my couch my floor something inanimate for them to feel that they can zone out of their placement of what they are in, a, in the average quote-unquote vanilla as a term being used world um, do you um, um, enter into conversations as to um, what need that feels like have they suffered something where See, they need to go to that kind of place well well they, because they're embracing a shadow yeah at that it, moment. It, it basically right yeah. some and you know it really is a I want to say it's a thin line between is and is right um, there's some individuals and I'm not saying this is for everybody and I'm just gonna repeat this again this is not everybody that's involved in these dynamics mm -hmm. there are some individuals that they have repressed psychological or emotional placements that they need fulfilled now that they're adults when you're a child you're given certain things right. if you did good in school you got a new toy um, birthdays a pat on the back there's certain things that you need to go back to that you don't necessarily can reach as an adult. You want to go back to a place that as an adult, it's a happy place. Mm -hmm. um, some folks, it's also a part of controlling themselves of their own personal vices. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, there's an individual in my life that I only talk to online that they have issues with controlling their day-to-day -day life, as in, what time should I do this? I'm not really good at scheduling myself. And they need another adult, almost like a life coach, but more of a personal life coach, not someone to be like, you're going to do well, let me pat you on the back and send you on your way, good boy. It's more like, no. Get up at 8 a.m. Get up at 8 a.m., Get the, put on your favorite suit, you're going to this interview at 9, you're to be there at 8.45. It's taking control of the things they probably would already have taken control of if they just had enough confidence or comfort zone for themselves. Right. Um, like I said, I do have individuals who are grown adults who like to portray being a child usually in between the ages of 6 and 12. Um, they all have lives that either they have very high pirating jobs or they have a very, very stressful life that they take care of their family. They take care of friends. They are a wife or a husband. They're the eldest in their family. They have so much responsibility. It's the need, yeah. it's the need to have the polarity yeah. of, e of, gosh, you've yeah. been in so much power for balance. so long. It's, it's the the truly the psychological and physical balance. balance. That right. all of a sudden, I don't want to be the adult anymore. I want to be the child. Yeah. I, all, I, I have exactly. to have it. All day long, I'm in charge. I need a moment of sanctity of myself yeah. that someone else could take the lift off 
off of my shoulders. Right. And a lot of individuals are in are, are in that boat. Mm -hmm. um, those who do have emotional or psychological um, displacements of some sort, most of them don't know it right off the bat. So therefore, when something goes bad or something goes wrong, they turn within themselves. And as an adult, they have to find a way of letting it out. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, we can't throw fits and cry in the middle of the street anymore. Like when we were nine, you know, I try sometimes, it doesn't work, the cops come. And, um, <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about it. I was like, I bet I could get away with it on Coenga. Yeah. Yes, you can. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> on Coenga, I bet I could. You can get away with a lot of things on Coenga. Coenga. Yeah. <laughs> That's the funny part. Go over Because all I got to do is point at Pan Pipes and go, I'm um, the owner there. And they're like this, oh yeah, okay. Oh, okay. okay. Have a good day. Yeah. 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 Booty do. -doo. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it is truly, a, you know, it's it's filling the needs and sometimes the emotional and psychological voids that also can be physical. Some people want physical reciprocation. They want to see a mark. They want to see something that reminds them, oh, this is why I am part of this interaction. Right. All right. Now, here's the, here's the, here's the, oh, you can hear the movie trucks out there. I told you this is I know. Mike. It's kind of a <laughs> super, like, ninja. Super ninja Mike. <laughs> Um, okay, and here's a big one. Yeah. Okay. There is, uh, because you're not going to do this again this week, are you? Yes, I am. <laughs> There's a voice out there that believes he understands this scene. You and I have had it. You and I have had many wow. a little sketch fits over this guy. Yeah. And, uh, and, and the thing is, is he says, BDSM. It's all one in the same. It's all one in the same, you and can, it's not just about spanking. Well, yeah, it's, it's not, not just, just about spanking. spanking. You but got that part one right. Of them. <laughs> That's one of them. But you got that right. And 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 the thing is, is and I think what it is is that so many of the clubs out there that are underground clubs and things that are being put up on are more of a fad type thing, mm -hmm. and they're doing things like come to the club. It's a BDSM club, and yeah. everybody goes, oh well, I'm into BDSM. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, and I, you know, you know, Percy, you know, and you know, going through the scenes and, and, and knowing each other in the clubs and mm -hmm, stuff like right, that. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not beyond saying, no, no, so, no, no, it's not the same thing. They yeah. go, no, no, BDSM, and I'm like, well, are you B? Are you D? Are you You're S? Are you roles. M? Are you all are you the above? Are you all the above? Because <laughs> I can count on a, on my fingers uh, uh, the handful of people that I know. Like you, yeah. they actually live the whole four letter yeah. lifestyle. Yes. I don't. I don't. Exactly. And then there's uppercase and lowercase. It's exactly. a way to write it and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And how we, how we um, speak amongst ourselves as to dominance. Right. How we right. speak to other people's subs and how we speak to our own, own subs are completely different. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And 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 so I, I know that somebody was saying once, uh, well, so you're because we were at a, we we went to uh, you remember the old club um, cinematic yeah and we would go to cinematic and they go oh, you guys are into BDSM and I'm said no I think Vic's more of a V because <laughs> just for the whole voyeurism thing there's nothing wrong with watching that's the best part <laughs> that's cool. I like being watched Can we it just works not talk about me she's <laughs> like it's bad enough I have to talk about other things later <laughs> my cousin's in the chat room. <laughs> Like, Your cousin's gonna learn a lot more, no. um, but uh, it, but it, you know, for me, I went there because I was uh, capital B low, lower D, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which means I I I was well, I, you know, I like the bondage yes. part, but I like to be the D, the domin I like to be domi dominated, so yeah. it was the D, but I didn't like sadomasochism mm -hmm. because I'm you know, you hurt me, I hit punch. Yeah, <laughs> I hear you. Do you know what I understand? Yeah, you you you, you, hit, you hurt me, I punch, <laughs> and they were like, so you're not. I don't understand, so you're not in the scene. And I said, Ugh. Ugh. That's the thing. Scene, like any other culture or pop culture, let's just be, let's just, let's, let's call it what it is. Any pop culture has a scene. It does not matter what it is. Any popular culture has a scene. Yes. May it be a club, may it be a way of dressing, it might be a combination of both. And the city that we reside in, and in some of the different types of, I guess you can say, um, scenes we have here could be anywhere of a, a mixture of nightclubs with music and dancing with folks who dress like the people of the quote-unquote lifestyle and therefore they put them together because they figures it's a nice way of making a good dollar and it also keeps their their pulp culture alive but the only problem is that when you educate a bunch of individuals who come into that environment and they really don't know anything and they're only getting the information from coming to a club you really only are gonna get a visual fraction of what individuals interpretate 
from their interactions with it. And it's different across the board. From being from the West to the East Coast and how we do things in Canada and how we do different things in Europe, I've noticed from traveling around that our Kansas is truly just our Kansas. Yeah. And when you go over to someone else's backyard, it's really, truly someone else's backyard. backyard. Mm -hmm. And if you go to certain cities and certain states and throw a big, huge umbrella term like BDSM like that out to them, they'll laugh in your face and go, you know what, you may want to sit at the front door and read this consent form and fill it out. Because yeah. we're going to tell when you come into our dungeon party, you're probably going to be one person's going to be slapped by someone who's insulted. Or you're going to get end up getting hurt in a way thinking that you throw a term out and they think, oh, you're into this. We right. do it. And then you end up going, I'm not into this. It's like, well, you just said this. Right. Yeah. No, I know. Because I've gone to the private dungeons even in downtown Los Angeles mm -hmm. uh, back, in my, uh, back in my early 20s. <laughs> That's when the good dungeons Not the ones went. that we went to? No, we went to ones too. <laughs> <laughs> she tells me not to include her in anything. But she pulls out the bag of tricks. She's like, Felix, she just opens it and goes, what? <laughs> but but there were ones that, but way back when, yeah. when it wasn't pop culture, when there wasn't the clubs right. in West Hollywood and stuff. Underground. It, was, it was truly underground. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, I was in my early 20s, and I went into downtown Los Angeles, and anybody who walked up to the door and said BDSM, didn't get in. No. They, they, you, you, I walked up and they said, and, and I went, capital B, little D. And they said, there you go. And I got a name tag put on it. Yep. Boom, right on my yeah. chest. So that the, the, the players inside the dungeon Understand. would know what not to do, what yeah. not mm -hmm. to say, what not to what not Just to like the hanky codes. Just I know like, yeah. some people, did they think the hanky code is completely for gays, individuals. Be quite frank, it's a discreet way of expressing what you're down with tonight in that public environment. Unless you're on Kawanga and then it's... Unless you're on Kawanga, yourself. then, you know, it's just part of some fashion forte. But... Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> actually what kind of drugs they sell yeah, out there. Yeah, that's true. Right. So you gotta, you know, that's don't... You, people, I want to put that clear that's that... That's why I'm wearing the, skull and crossbones, because it's my way of saying I'm going to pan pipes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta make that clear, because a lot yeah. of people, you know, since the drug trade and the gay trade... The gay trade and trade the, the gay well. trade... And the gay. All put... Use the hankies now. Mm -hmm. You can't get people confused yeah. going up and smacking the drug dealer or a gangbanger on the butt. Yeah, and let them know that, hey, so you you happen to like the beef fist because you're wearing a red one. No. no. I'm telling you, I'm selling a smack today. What's your problem? Yeah, exactly. Right. Totally understandable. Yeah, and and I, I don't think, and uh, the thing of it is, is, is just like most everything, mm -hmm. pop culture can bring it to light and make it okay for the people who might be too scared to go into the private dungeons or not know about it when we yes. were there. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, double-edged sword. It is a very double-edged sword. It's now made it all kinds of hippie. It's way past hippie. It's almost in a. It's almost in a point of. It's just like the occult sciences and studies and life's lifestyle that comes to individuals who take occultism very seriously. You you have all these shows and these movies that over popularize it to the point that it almost makes it look like. It's just like the next fad. I loved wearing black between the ages of 12 and 16. And therefore, yeah. blah, 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 blah. But it's, it's my hero and I sparkle in the sun. Oh, exactly. So, and and that, that's a sad thing because for individuals who make things their life. I'm going to be charmed. Yeah. I'm just sister. Exactly. I myself who lives this as a lifestyle. When yeah. I meet an individual who wants to become my submissive or says they want to be a slave or individuals wants to serve me in different elements and they decide that, oh, this is the fad for the week, you know, they committed themselves and after the commitment after they have decided not to do those things or they end up realizing I thought it was just me dressing up and wearing a collar and you taking me out to clubs and tying me up in front of people and making me look like I'm your, your personal handbag was enough no um, you still have your chores Tuesdays and Thursdays may that be washing and putting away my laundry in chronological order by what I wear to work and what I wear out or so be it I want one <laughs> And label the cabinet so mommy knows where everything is. I mean, I want the one that does my clothes. They're wonderful. I have one. Oh, <laughs> they're wonderful. I want one. I want a slave, that, a pet that does my clothes. Well, we can find you. You guys have one. a slave pet that does your clothes. <laughs> <laughs> no, honey, you're not a slave. Ah, <laughs> you're a pet, but you're not a slave Aww. pet. <laughs> I feel like a slave pet. No, <laughs> bad. I'm just joking. I do the laundry sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And see what happened. <laughs> yeah. 
there went the silk shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I put it all in one washing machine. What is the point? Oh, oh, so, so could you break down the BDSM? Yes. Um, yeah. So those who like to throw the big, huge umbrella out there. Right. B, D, S, and M. Maybe put a slash between each of those letters because that's how it's usually put on. And that's on what text. I put. If anybody was on our Facebook, that's exactly that's, how I did it. And, that, I put and it that's respects slash. to all those who decide that they only want to be part of one sector of that sun, if you want to call it. And then in bondage, you could be a top or you could be a bottom. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, that's taken care of by uppercase or lowercase lettering. The uppercase lettering, of course, says that you are the person in charge, mm -hmm. master and mistress, madam, like I like being called, or, um, or domina or dom, a male or female connotation of a t person that's in charge, or a charge themselves. And a charge is just another dominant top who's watching someone or caretaking a submissive being or whatever their particular nature might be. Um, then you have those individuals who, D, you have dominance. It also means discipline. Mm -hmm. Disciplinarians are not necessarily have to be a dom. A disciplinarian's job is to basically put you a line. It's almost like your sergeant major. Yeah. They're almost like your parent, but yet they're not. Their job is to basically make sure that whatever it is that you describes between you two, that they are the ones watching the hand at all times. Again, a, a dominant and submissive role in there. We were military. <laughs> you can tell. We just like your sergeant major. <laughs> he's just like, he's like, I totally understand what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> I'm right there with you. It's called a drill sergeant. Exactly. And that was my parent. That was my best friend. And that's the same way as your charge and your dom. They're supposed to be almost like your best friend and your parent. Um, the S, a sadist. A sadist is an individual who pretty much has a psychological and physical high from inflicting impact onto another individual. It could be physical, it could be mental, it could be emotional, but it does hit certain nerves that could be either painful emotionally, physically, or psychologically. But the sadist is the individual who enjoys and derives the pleasure of being that inflictor. The M is a masochist. This is an individual, they don't have to be submissive. They could just be a being who enjoys receiving physical, psychological, or emotional pain or some sort of restriction or limitation or something that, that keeps them from going from further than what they're supposed to or pressing those limits to go past. You know, you ever, some people might heard of the term pain slut. A pain slut is a masochist. This is an individual who psychologically, emotionally, and physically gets an actual high and even a bit of empowering mm -hmm. feeling within themselves from receiving physical, psychological, or emotional pain to levels that most people might break down and cry or break down and run away. But the, to them, it's a way of, of release and empowerment. So believe it or not, depending on these roles, may you be the capital side of the letter or the lowercase of the letter, letter you both have power your power of giving up your power or the power of having an encompassing or um, exchanging and taking the power. And that's really how those letters are broken up. They are, should not really be put together, but you know, you have to put together for the, for the, for instance, gay, lesbians, transgenders, and bi's. You know, they throw that all together as, as mm -hmm. a cluster when it comes to pride. Oh, gay pride? It's gonna be gay, lesbians, transgender, and then they throw it all together as if like we're all alike because we're under an umbrella of what they call intersexual or well, like alternative throwing, lifestyle. Well, it's like, right? throw, it's like throwing all the pagans together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, see, that really bothers me because <laughs> I don't consider myself pagan, <laughs> you know, but I respect and I also practice and learn a lot of the ritualistic um, interactions because it's part of my own denominational choices. That right. doesn't make me pagan. The same thing here. I'm a psychological dominant. I'm also a sadomasochist, meaning I like to inflict pain onto others as well as receive it. So you can also be a dominant individual mm -hmm. who also partakes either as or other. And then there's some that are completely down the, the spectrum and there's switches. And switches are folks who have dominant energies in certain departments and then they have submissive energies mm -hmm. in other departments. And that is why a lot of it is ritual, why we go into the whole viewpoint that there is such thing as rituals and ritualistic interactions in that culture, in our, well, in my culture. I, I, I have no problem saying that is my culture. It's been my whole life, pretty much. Um, 
my household was a household that the mother was in charge. It was the dominant individual. I had a father that was a foreman in construction, so he looked like he was a big old strapping man. But he was braiding our hair and making us cookies. And the uh -huh. tiny, the tiny four foot eleven, ninety eight pound mother of mine, who who didn't raise her voice louder than maybe like a couple of decibels, was the one who was like the iron fist of the house. And all she had to say is certain words in a certain tone, and a whole room would go quiet. Same thing. I don't, I don't have to raise my voice at my submissives. I even have doms who are underneath my care as a mentor E. They want another dominant person mm -hmm. who's been through this, who's seen this, who's feeling some of the things that they're trying to grow from, but yet they haven't reached that point. But they might have subs or folks who want to get into that point with them, and they're like, I haven't even scratched that surface yet. I don't know if I can teach or mentor someone. And then they team up with another dominant individual who kind of like a godmotherly type way still allows you to be the being that you are, but sometimes you might have a submissive exchange. Like the doms who are underneath my care, they only bottom or take physical um, impact only from me, but they will never take it from anyone else. And that's because it's our exchange. It's our ritualistic exchange. It's our connection and our contract to one another saying that I'm willing to give you knowledge and my time, which is very little, but I'm giving to you for exchange for your body and your mind. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the lifestyle is it. I'm giving you what I can give you because you want it and you only want it from me in exchange that you give what I want and I need because I want it from you. Right. It's not like, oh, just any sub can do. It's not that simple. Training is so, so detrimental. It takes so much of your time. Yeah. You know, I have to wake up at 8.30 in the morning, not because I have to get ready for work, but because I have two dominant individuals in their lifetimes. That they, when they wake up in the morning, the first thing they want to know is, ma'am, can I take off my ball gag for me waking up for work? <laughs> and I have to have my alarm go off to know that that 10 minutes it goes off because in 10 more minutes my sub's going to ask me can I take my ball gag off you know you have to adjust your oh. life even my even your personal life right. the people I date are vanilla they're not even involved in that type of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's times they go, sweetheart, I'm going to go pick up your pet from the grocery store. She's already done. You know, <laughs> it's that kind of thing is the kind of life I live. And in some people's lives, it's like the, that. I got to go get the grocery shopping monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go get the laundry slave from the market. You know, I'm kidding. You know, and that's true. And, I mean, that's for me. It's not just for, it's not for anybody, and it's not just for anyone. Right. It's a lot of work. It's as, as much work as you being a married parent right. of other adults who don't have to listen to you. With many children. With many, many, <laughs> many, children. many children. I never have to have bio kids. That's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> I have enough of them. <laughs> I was about to offer you my 16-year-old. Darn. You, you know what? I like him. He's, he's quiet. You know. He might be into laundry. <laughs> Oh, no, he does the laundry for my mom. See? <laughs> You're starting him young. He's, yeah. <laughs> Get them ready. He's oh, when, he was, when he was five, I gave him a vacuum cleaner and put him in a bow tie yeah. and a vest and said, said, hey, stop young. Merry Christmas, Christmas. here's a vacuum husband. cleaner. He's yeah. a wonderful husband. That's <laughs> what he wanted. That's right. <laughs> so, um, I, um, how does this um, all, all play into your magic? Because as we know, you it's a great part of your life as yes, well. Yes. And and you practice? You know, <laughs> one <laughs> My paycheck lives here. <laughs> I work another job just so I can give Pam Pipes my money. <laughs> like um you know cuz there's a sex magic aspect yes. as well. So do you mind divulging Sights, senses, feelings, voices, mm -hmm. the elements of time and change all come into play in this lifestyle. Right. Um, there's certain, my subs, there's certain ones that like to see me in a certain way. Mm -hmm. So it does matter on what colors I wear. Um, I come here very frequently for different oils. Even some of them, you go, what is this combination <laughs> for? Why this? It's because each scent has a specific trigger right. to certain people. Some of my subs, they like to play either psychologically, emotionally, or physically with hoods on, um, or their sights right. or vocal restriction. Um, with that, they're purely they're purely coming off of what it is that they smell or see or hear. Um, I burn certain candles in my house mm -hmm. at all times when they're in present. Um, the order of how they set up my room, because I do have an active altar in my room. Right. My household is 24-7 bondage, but it's also 24-7 
I, I consider myself a practicing alchemist. Mm -hmm. um, I wash with certain things. I sleep a certain part of the room. My subs do the same thing. Um, all of them have a special wash they wear. It clears their mind and their body so that they know that they're leaving the secular world, call their mom, their dads, their jobs, their friends, and their car outside. Like when a they, cleansing. It's a cleansing. Mm -hmm. When yeah. they come into my house, which is our masoon, right. they are not the person that they are to the outside world. Right. You are the person that you desire to be and with me. May that be a, a pet dog, may that be a little girl, may that be a gimp who just wants to be hanging in the middle of my kitchen while I'm doing dishes. Whatever that per person might, part might be, mm -hmm. that is all part of their training. Mm -hmm. In order for them to cut their mind off so that they can enjoy that moment of solitude, hence why they're involved, right. is, is all tied into those elements. Uh, what type of day they're supposed to come to do certain things. Mm -hmm. I go by, um, I know this might be not so right to, or to mention, but I do have, I go by a Masonic clock in my house. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. So, you know, work is from noon to, to midnight. Mm -hmm. And then in their eyes, it could be sun outside. But if I say it's midnight, they go by, the, by my clock. Mm -hmm. My year, when they write to me, it has to go like the month, the, the, you know, the month, the day, and the year mm -hmm. of light. Right. Not 2010. Mm-hmm. And these are things that I have embedded in them so that they can understand their dominant person. Mm -hmm. um, if they know that these things it's are... It's also letting them connect into the energy. Mm -hmm. Completely. Mm -hmm. How else are they going to understand why I'm doing the things I'm doing to right. them unless they're at the same page and path with me? Mm -hmm. um, waking up at a certain time, wearing certain things wearing certain oils, bathing with certain washes. And they also, some of them all go through meditations. Some of them may be back bed. Mm -hmm. And while they're in back bed, their head is exposed, their body's trapped into a, a, a material that they can't move their arms or their legs, so they're completely in physical surrender. Mm -hmm. But their mind is the only thing that is left out in their That's face like and their head. That's like those chambers, those mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. sensory depri it's, deprivations. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I'll sit right next to them while they're wearing a blindfold, head exposed but body trapped, and I will say certain things in rotation. It could be their particular meditation ritual or their particular chant, and each one has their own personal chant. Mm -hmm. I might say certain words that, that will trigger for someone to do certain things. For instance, the sky outside is green. I might say that in the middle of the living room, and one of the subs will get up, and they will know that means it's time for them to take out the trash. Oh, nice. And it'll be just for that, that individual. One. So everyone else is going along their business because if I said the trash needs to be taken out, everyone's going to drop what they're doing and run and do the trash. No, mm -hmm. I want that particular person to take out the trash. Right. So if that means that the sun outside is green is a trigger for John to take out the trash, John will take out the trash. It's really a connection psychologically and um, elementally between you and that person. You have to know what signs they are. You got to know their risings because even though in the outside world they might be able to handle all that, mm -hmm. they truly are their pure self when you're involved in these type yeah. of dynamics. You know, they it's, 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 it's like a ceremonial yeah. magician. Yeah. 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 A yeah. ceremonial magician will 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 section their yeah. life like that. A true ceremonial magician. Yeah. You, can, you can get the ceremonial magicians who are only ceremonialists in the moment that they're they're building their circle and right. that's it and calling the elements. Right. Yeah. yeah. But a true ceremonial magician will run their entire life according accordingly mm -hmm. yeah. to what ceremonial magic tells them to. And uh, not every not every not every uh, B slash D slash yes. S slash M person is into ceremonial magic no. or the ritualistic mm -hmm. thing. No, but I can tell you that uh, there are a lot that are yes. because they uh, and they practice because they, well, most they're, of them they're, are they're family. Customers. Most right. of them are family. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I don't care what state or country I've oh, been so far. I, I have yet to not not meet one. Yeah. yeah, not yet. I think almost every dungeon, <laughs> almost every dominatrix yeah. shops someone. Yeah, it yeah. shops, shops in yeah. here, yes. Mm -hmm. so, and they're all yeah. into the oils and the candles. Exactly. And, and they're running yeah. their things accordingly to, exactly. to, to their household rules, to their exactly. dungeon rules. to their. Mm -hmm. uh, we have full dungeons that shop in here that are not necessarily households, but that's how they're running their dungeon. Yeah. And their dungeon That's how they protect their dungeon. dungeons. Right. It's their way of cutting off, again, from the secular world, mm -hmm. from our world. Because it is another world. Yeah. Since, you know, any type of lifestyle that has individuals 
running in a cluster, no matter what race, no matter what country, no matter what state you're in, despite with the same mindset, because it is the same mindset. Mm -hmm. I know everyone wants to try to separate themselves when, they, when they're in a group, because you know we've been all bred to raise to think that we're all special individuals. We are. No one else is like ourselves. We're our own individual. We're but the, the world still doesn't revolve the around world us. The world revolves about all of us doing the damn thing. And yeah. it's really the same thing when it comes to dealing with um, that lifestyle and with the ritualistic backgrounds. If you stop, mess up, a, a structure, because that's what ritual is, a structure mm -hmm. in a BDSM environment, B, D, S, or M, or whatever dynamic right. you want to put your household in, subs or dominant individuals might not have the respect for each other that they need to continue that household the way it should be because of lack of structure. Right. Well, and here's the thing, you know, in the occult community. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hate using, I, like you, I don't like saying pagan. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because when you say pagan, everybody goes, oh, Wiccan. Mm-hmm. Mm. And that really burns my crack, too. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even We're smoke that, but it just makes me mad. It's nothing We're, worse than burnt crack. It's wrong. Oh, it's just we bad. Don't want, we don't want you burning your crack. Not no, here. No, not here. Not uh, here. <laughs> You're in our chair. Don't do that. <laughs> no, but you have, you, you, you say pagan, they go, mm -hmm. oh, you're Wiccan. And, and the thing of it is, is no, I'm an occultist. Mm -hmm. And if you have to put me under an umbrella term, put me under the umbrella term of occultist. But, like, uh, you get some of the groups out there that have no structure. They have zero structure. A lot of yeah. people read five books that that's not a structure. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> you can hear the brakes of the truck out front. Yeah. <laughs> Way out there, too, right? I know, that's funny. Uh, you, you wouldn't hear it if your headphones, if their headphones weren't on, the mic wasn't on. We'd be like, what, what breaks? What's that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you have these people come in, and the first things they do, and, and, and we've experienced it, is they, uh, oh, what's that? And they reach for something on your altar. Oh, my God. They reach for that something on the mad. wall. They reach for something inside my bookcase. Or they put your drink on those things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've had people take up uh, oh. some of our antique books and put their coffee cups on it to, no. the, to hold the page no. open. Oh, pull them out by the spine, spine and, and rip the, the spine, spine right spine off. Completely off. Yeah. I have had um, no. a no. friend of ours, Candy, uh, Candy, who's who comes in. She was she had a friend with her, and and they were looking around at some of the stuff that was hanging on the walls inside the reading room. This, you know, some of the mm -hmm. uh, antique uh, voodoo stuff. Mm -hmm. And her friend went, what's, and she grabbed his finger, almost broke it, and she goes, we don't touch anything in here unless we ask. Cause she goes, you'll right. notice that when I look at something, she goes, I purposely you put my hands. You stone with your eyes, not with your hands. Yeah, she goes, I purposely put my hands behind my back, yeah. and I lean forward and look. Yeah. She goes, and I don't even ask to touch anything. Yeah. She goes, because she goes, there's no, there's no respect to it. And uh, it's truly in the occult, mm -hmm. true ceremonialist adult are hard they're becoming they're becoming a rare commodity yeah i'm scared because mm -hmm. uh, who, who am i supposed to, to you know to train under now <laughs> i mean honestly I, I i spent most of my life um observing and learning different cultures mm -hmm. and, and their ritualistic standpoints and then when i got involved in this particular lifestyle it took so much of my time mm -hmm. i had to make time for my occultism background and necessities for me to be a well-rounded individual, mm -hmm. to be that person that everyone else needs, that dom, right. that co-worker, that sister, that best friend, without my occultism lifestyle, I don't think I would be that person that they need me to be without no, it. No, because you can, you can be very disciplined yes. and very strict, right. and, and it doesn't hurt that you and I have a military background. No, because it, it does, helped, actually, because I wouldn't have survived the military without it. Yeah, it, hel it helped. Frank. It helped. I'm being quite frank about that. I, well, I actually came out of a pretty disciplined household. Mm -hmm. So did I. Yeah, Mom and was raised in Germany. You know how they do it. Oh. Absolutely. Yeah, and she was Native American and French and black, so she was really a, a cannibal. Mine was, mine's, I, my, my, mine's Irish, Native American, and German. See, so you understand the oh. woe. Hello. Yeah. I'm from bleachers. You, you're great, honey. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, well, fine. <laughs> but, um. The of my life. Aww. Um. Um, somebody's asking Prince Price. Yes, that's what I said. That 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 ceremonialists are a rare commodity right they now. Are. Um, and then it's just and because of the the lifestyle that pertains to being a ceremonial ritualist is not as easy as people would like to hear it no. said they are. No, they like to believe that a ceremonialist simply lives their life doing what the hell ever they want to do. Right. Mm. And I wish. um. 
right? And then when it comes time that they want something, they pop out the they, they, they pop out, out the their grimoire, grimoire and, and they put on the cans and, and, and I and keep telling this. people, a, a true ceremonialist understands that every thought, every time they have a thought. That's an actual magical act because you put energy towards it. Yes. And that you better control what you think all the time mm -hmm. because every thought is a magical act. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and just like in the BDSM. And that's exactly what it is. is you, you guys have actually, you that world has actually perfected it because it, Miss Mina. Yes. Um, Almost, you know, she cannot. I almost called you by your real name. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Burn. Burn. I almost, I almost called you by your real name. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you can't go home. You can't go home in a bad day and, and, and just start having just a plain old conversation with somebody or break down. Or, no. You cannot do it. No. Because you, at that moment, that, that thought has become not only a magical act, but it is also transformed into a physical act almost simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and I'm telling you, it, it's when people when when people ask me, how do I be a ceremonialist? The first thing I tell them is, go find a dungeon to get trained. <laughs> really? And, and they just look at me and I go, you have to be able to control yourselves. Yes. You have to, because if you if you if you uh, agree if you um, lack of control is if well. you have a lack of control if you. If you cannot control what you're saying, what you're doing, the words you choose, how you the choose. vibrations yes. you put together, um, you, you and I have known each other for so so very long, yes. and you'll and and you've given me a lot of leeway when we just talk together, yes. just one, one on one, because I stop and I think really carefully on the yes. words that I want to put together, and Vicky does too. Vicky will stop. And there'll be silence, and then they'll be like, uh, people will think like, well, you didn't understand my question, or are you ignoring me? Or no. you? And she's very carefully putting together and building the sentence that she's going to tell them on what to do. Yeah. And it's very, very, um, it's very precise. And the words that she uses, and, and I use and you use, yes. if you listen to what Vic says, what she says is actually... It's deeper than what it is, yes. and, and and it vibrates with people, mm -hmm. and um, you have to think of your words very yes. carefully, and you have to think of your actions very carefully. Extremely. And how many how many customers come in, Vic, and poof, mouth come out of the mouth, and you just look at them and you go, why in the world? Would you say something like that? Mm -hmm. They'll just say, you know what, my life sucks and it's over. Well, sure. Well, you sure. just you, yeah, yeah, you just universe, you condemned it. <laughs> you just did it. You the just said it to yourself. Out and I will deliver. <laughs> yep. You know, um, very you wish, you know. Exactly. What you vibrate out, you know, that low vibrational tone, you're just going to receive right back. And it's the same thing, especially you know? in sensory deprivation, as an example right. we've used earlier. Or when you're dealing with individuals who aren't into any type of physical mm -hmm. type of interaction, it's purely mental and emotional. Like most of my, yes. my subs, they are not into being spanked or flogged or tied up. They truly just like the, my, I guess you could say, maternal tone. Mm-hmm. I sound like someone they can trust, they can break down to emotionally, mm -hmm. psychologically, and mm -hmm. physically. Um, if they were ever to think about having any type of impact, they will come to me because they will know I will not hit them because I'm hurting them. Mm -hmm. But it's because they desire and need it. Mm -hmm. And that's different than when you see it in televisions and in shows. And I work in another business that we sell, make and you know not just for the movie industry the day-to-day -day dom or day-to-day -day person or couples or whoever who want to invest in this type of lifestyle wears the first things i tell them as they walk into my shop to purchase things of um, the business i work for mm -hmm. um is have you sat down and thought about what part of the of the candlestick you're on mm -hmm. yeah and if so what what end of this vlogger because i'll hand them something what end of this vlogger are you and if they naturally grab the handle, and, and, they, and but yet they hold it sheepish, that means they like the other end. Mm -hmm. And if they grab the handle, just ready for it, then it lets me know where they really are. And then from that point, I turn the table on them. I go, oh, so you like to do the flogging. Have you ever, ever been flogged? And then the yep. first thing they do is they go, 
well, I'm not into that part. I like giving. I said, yeah, but you know what? You, you don't have know. to know you how to receive to, to exactly. give. Yes. You have to know to be a, how so to be a student to be a master. It's all about you always are an apprentice. And how to temper it. And you're always, always an apprentice. Yeah. If the moment you tell yourself that exactly. and this, if you're I'm a dominant person and that's even in my, my yeah. regular life. The bit the very small fraction that's vanilla of my life, I'm dominant there too. Right. And I tell myself the moment you say that you are the master of everything that's the, that's around you, you mm -hmm. have lost the battle. Right. You've yeah. completely cut off the point of you ever growing out of it's any part of the circle exactly. that you're in. You will never can encompass more of the power, which it is that most dominant individuals enjoy, mm -hmm. and they are the ones who do harness that. Mm -hmm. You lose it completely. You have now defeated yourself. And in your subs, those who your mentorees, your switches, mm -hmm. pets, slaves, whatever denom that they feel comfortable being under your care, mm -hmm. will start to feel that, and then they'll feel well. My window's only this big, and I can only look out this far. Mm -hmm. When most of them really want a big window that they can look out of, but the no only reason why they're not going to fall out of it is because they've been structurally put to not do certain things, and right. if they want to keep within that safety of that dominance mm -hmm. threshold they will not cross it. And that's because they have a psychological, a physical, and emotional connection right. that through, and it is ritual. In the morning, I have my subs make me tea. They know what particular tea to make it. They know how many ice cubes to put in it. They know how many pieces of sugar I want it. Just like you know how to make an incense, how many parts of, a, of an herb to put in, yes. just how many parts of an oil yes. to put into it. And, I, and half of my subs didn't know how to cook, they didn't know how to wash clothes, and they are adults. I've taught them the things that they should have learned. You put so many of this in my bath, and so much of this in the eggs, and they end up learning different types of ways of setting their day-to-day -day life, that when they go home, they have a structured life too. And it's all within the way of, of having some sort of day-to-day -day ritual. Our day-to-day -day ritual is we wake up together, you know. All the subs get together and they do the morning chores together as right. a group. And if you sit back and watch it, it looks like a dance. Because I have it set up that each person does certain things at a certain time right. in a certain way. That when they work amongst themselves, if you play music against it, it will look like they were doing the waltz. And it's yeah. because I want them to feel empowered of the service that they're doing for me in exchange for the services that I'm giving them. I've always told everybody that a ceremonialist looks like they're dancing. Yeah. A true ceremonialist, when they move around their altar, yes. when they when they move around when in the, the circle, workings. when they're in the workings, it is one of the most gorgeous dances oh my God, it's that so you would ever see. And the thing is, is that uh, tempering, back to tempering. Yes. For me to teach, I couldn't have just read books and wrote notes and and did a bunch of things. And um, do you know what I mean? Um, actually, actually, actually just did it all through an intellect. If I hadn't had teachers who did things to me, mm -hmm. you know, I had a teacher in England. And dear God, oh dear God, this guy drew out a tree, a picture of a tree. And he said, I want you to go out to the Thetford Forest and bring me back the bark of this tree. And I spent months out there after after duty, Good. right, in freezing my ass off in England. And, but I found this tree, and I brought it. I took a picture of it, and I brought the bark to him. And I said, here you go. I found it. And he laughed at me, and he goes, well, by golly, there's a tree out there that looks like that. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and I just looked at it, and he goes, he goes, Yes, but you know what? You found a tree within the forest. Mm -hmm. You have a commitment and a ritual because mm -hmm. what I did was to figure out how to do this forest, I had to go about it in a ritualistic nature. I had to put it in grids. Mm -hmm. I had to map the grids. I yep. had to have compasses. I had yep. Everything had to be structured and, 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 and ritualistic. You had to think about the time of year it was, was so you know that it was blossoming, so you know that was the tree. Where, <laughs> what, what, what direction everything was, so I yes. know what the side the moss would grow. And so he brought it in. So when I make my students do, and I don't make them go out into forests and do things like that. Which would be fun if you did. <laughs> it, it would if I had some forests around here. They probably would have to. <laughs> And, and I'd sit back here and giggle over the tree. <laughs> however, however, um, and at the time, I was pissed. 
I was pissed off that he did this. I said, you've got to be kidding me. I build weapons during the day. I, I have to lifeguard on the base pool to make ends meet. meet. And, and you send me out here for three months into the damn forest to do what? To do what? To find a tree that you weren't even sure? God damn it. Yeah. yeah. And he, 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 he looked at me and he goes, when, when you grow... When, you, when the student becomes a teacher, the teacher will understand the student's role. Yeah. And he goes, and you'll temper it. And he goes, but you'll also make them do as many things as possible um, to get themselves ritualistic and, and, and structured. Mm -hmm. and, and everybody's is slightly different. different. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that through the years of teaching, I've actually become more structured with the students. I make them do more things now yes. that that when they hand it to me I look at it and go very good and I hand it back and they just look at me and their little mouths drop like oh, that's it that's all you're gonna give and then they start to appreciate that but they become um, one of the things that I tell them to do and it just makes them go really is uh, you know I finish teaching the philosophies and everything everybody's got their little favorites and everybody's got their their mm -hmm. non favorites mm -hmm. and I go so which was the one that you just absolutely don't like you know and they'll go oh I don't like this one and I'm like oh okay so what I want you to do is write me a paragraph on why that philosophy is great oh. yeah oh. <laughs> love it and they hand it to me I don't even read it I just hand it right back to them. And they just look at me, and I go, well, now you can find the beauty in all things, can't you? That's right. And how to use everything. And, but they look at me, they're like, you're not even going to read it? Because I put some really good points in there. And I'm like, well, good for you. You put good points in there. That's great. It shows that you think. It shows that you have depth. That's right. That shows that you have depth. But that's the, you, you didn't write the piece of paper for me. In the end, you wrote the piece of paper for yourself. Yes. Just like in the end, I went out into the forest for, for myself. myself. And, and in the end... The subs are doing it for themselves. They are doing it for themselves. Most of the submissive powers that I've ever owned, I say powers because people think that slaves and subs have none. Well, they don't have to come to you. They don't have to serve you. They don't have to sign contracts with you. They, they don't have to wear out. your collar. Mm -hmm. And actually, even though you might say that, yeah, if they walk out of this household, they would be disrespected, not just by me, but by anyone else where they do. Well, guess up. They can still walk out that door yeah. and live their life as it is. Because they hold the is, power. They still hold the power. And your job as the individual to harness it. You are the yep. chalice holding the power. And that's how a true, that's and how it's a true magician to, is, and too. And it's supposed to be heavy and hard enough for the elements to contain whatever type of elixir it is. If it's acid, you're not going to be some sort of metal that's going to corrode. Yep. If you know that this person has certain weaknesses... It is within yourself to find your strength so that you could be able to give a little to them so yeah. that they could be able to overcome that and be able to go on their way. Mm -hmm. Again, having my subs wake up at a certain time of day to make tea in a certain way while one folds the clothes a certain way and does a certain thing, it's really to give them a moment to themselves, yeah. to let them know that their importance of whatever their task is for me is not because they're doing something for me. They are doing something for themselves. In return, they are assisting me and then insisting me and giving me enough time to not do something gives me time to do things for them. May it be ordering them a new collar or making dinner for my subs or remembering that my, my sub who's packing my apartment right now deserves a walk in the dog park when this is all over. <laughs> um, these are the things that matter to them. And it might seem little and nothing right. to someone else, mm -hmm. but to the individual who is giving their time, their mind, and their body in exchange for may it be growth within their particular interest, mm -hmm. or may it be the protection that they feel they seek or they've received from you as your position in their lives, mm -hmm. that's what matters. I encompass magic into my, my world because that is what I am before I had a whip in my hand. It was, my, it was mm -hmm. part of what I was before I even put this part of my life together. Um, with that in mind, I, I figured, in I guess for some people, this is a role that they play when they want to play it. Mm -hmm. Between six and six, my girlfriend's coming home. I'm going to put on my favorite outfit and we're going to play. And that is cool. I love that. That's wonderful. And that is a ritual. Every Friday at 6 p.m., the midnight, you guys are doing this. So be it. For me, 
because the way I live in order for me to be that dominant energy revolves around my, my belief in occultism is why I combine them two together. And I even have subs that are actually very highly Christian. Very highly Christian. Speak matter of fact, my house dog who's who's actually packing my apartment, she's leaving to the military and she's um a seven day Adventist. I am a I I used to be a Jew and you know I still practice you know a, a great deal and you know I I was Catholic you know yeah 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 I'm Jewish and <laughs> still am and you, were, uh, <laughs> you were Greek Orthodox no oh. yes it was thrust upon me I was never actually. she's like I didn't ask for it. it was already given to me <laughs> yeah you know, something I was that was that was that the biggest in the in the in the little yeah, yeah. yeah. all <laughs> sorts of that for that one huh? <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, I with that, it gives a ground mm -hmm. for everyone to work together. So they don't feel like, well, I'm the only one doing these things. I'm the only one who has to go through this journey. I'm like, no, everybody goes through the journey together. Mm -hmm. yeah. You just guys have different roads to get to the same place. Yeah. The same place will be me. Your road might be left while the other sub who does dishes is right, so-and-so in the center. But mm -hmm. those paths all lead to the same yeah. center, and mm -hmm. that center is me. And I will do everything in exchange to give back. And that's how it should be. Yeah. Um, it's it's the same thing with magic or being a ceremonialist. You have to give yourself to get anything back. Yeah. Um, you, have, you actually, I, you actually I, have to. You have you're to. You're really, yeah, well-rounded and balanced. I've heard of, like, some um, doms and that. They just don't provide that. No, they don't. Oh, but this sucks. is why we had Miss Mina come in because I know that she's very ritualistic, very ceremonialist, yeah. very disciplined, yeah. and it could show how. And I know that you incorporate your magic yes. into it. Do we must we must know? Uh, I don't know a lower caliber. You know, do you know what I mean? I've I, I've rarely come across someone of your caliber. Mm -hmm. You know, where you're this high minded. We we get that we get that we get the do people you know who do I mean? it as a job. Yeah. And you know I do too. I do I, it as a you, job as you, well. I, we know you do it as a job, but it's but but that's all they do. Yeah, it's it's and just I know, like, a job. And I do but, and I do. But you do. Like but you too. do. These these are people. You know yes. what I mean? It's that never leaves your mind. I yes. mean, you're still they're still and then you're beings. providing for they're them. Still beings, and, and here's you know? the thing. You know, we they had mean, interns in the store, and for the love of for the for the love of all that was holy, they couldn't understand that in the end they had all they, they had power. They got bitter because they thought they were doing everything for us, and they were getting nothing back. <gasps> I've been asking to be uh, a oh she's going to do this on air. Ever. She's going to do this oh, on air. Yes, oh I am. We, we, she's going to do this on air. She's <laughs> going to do this on air. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was going to pull this card out the back pocket. But I also... Where's, where's, where's the nine tails? Of course you're going to... Yeah, it's self-inflicted. I'll do it myself. You can watch. And you can watch. <laughs> <laughs> Since, you know, you like watching. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I hope your cousin's I, not listening. <laughs> I did a stage thing once. What? She, it looks your first. The hair and the face matching. <laughs> it looks her turn red. It's she so got, okay. cute. It's, it's, I love it. it's too bad we don't have actually this live streaming because she's red. Blush of vision. <laughs> yeah, blush of vision there. It's cute. I love it. G G's going control. Delete. Control. Delete. <laughs> um, um, let's take a music break. Right. Okay. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna play one of you, one of the bands that you say we don't that doesn't play it enough on the air. Is we're, it? We're we're gonna play oh, we're gonna Is play it? leather. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and we're actually gonna play a song. That, Strap me down. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you. Know. Thank you. When we come back, we're gonna give some giveaways. Yay. We're, yeah, we're going to continue. Stuff. We're going to have Miss Mina here with us. Yes, yes. We're going to talk about sex magic. We're going to get into the um, absolute, uh, absolute, absolute ritual of it. Yes. And so it's going to be some fun times. Stay tuned for our second hour. Here's uh, Leather Strips. Uh, strap me down.
are back. Yay. We got some giveaways. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We free have stuff, some free stuff, free stuff, free stuff, free stuff. Free exorcism giveaways. <laughs> oh, we, we don't have as much as what uh, uh, G oh. and uh, Serenity, Serenity are going to give away this yeah. coming up Thursday. We're just so those of you, do... those of you who are, who, are, who are on this board, Thursday night on Just Say and Radio, uh, G, who's on the board with us, and Serenity, who, who actually had to go to a, uh, an investigation, oh. are going to give away some uh, Grindhouse CDs, uh, DVDs. Oh, right. <laughs> They're giving away some Last Exorcism stuff. But we, we have a couple of things, too. What do we got? Drum roll. Drum roll. Well, <laughs> we have some flameless candles. Um, with the Last Exorcism logo on it, and a mini poster, and a postcard. We're going to do t-shirts, but we only have smalls, so we figured that they might be hard to so give away. you got a really, really skinny girlfriend, that's, or, yeah. or a hipster girl that's really small. That can... <laughs> if, you happen, if you happen to win and you're a small baby doll, or small t-shirt, throw we'll, it throw stuff it in. In. we'll throw it in. Otherwise, we're just leaving it out. Yeah, so if you're small and you win... Let us know. We'll throw it in. Uh, we'll do a T-shirt. If you're not, then uh, the larger sizes, Jean and Serenity yeah, are giving away. There, yeah. uh, but uh, and that'll that'll be on Thursday. Tonight's thing is going to be um, mini poster, a flameless candle, a postcard, and if you're small, either a baby doll or a T-shirt. Ta-da. Ta-da. Although I'm medium and I can fit into the small. There you go. The so, Unibooby T-shirt. It makes you look like you're. I don't, <laughs> although I'm okay. I'm like a B cup though. So. I'm kind of small. <laughs> oh, honey, anything more than a mouthful is a sprained tongue. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> oh, my God. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> anyway, the small can fit. You don't in. see me complaining. None. This, anyway, <laughs> the whole point. <laughs> she be dead she's like, shut up. The whole point of Her, the, her arms are waving. Like, Stop we're it. skipping this. <laughs> anyway, the whole point of that conversation was if you're a medium, you can fit into the small. It's a little snug, but yeah. As long as you're not like a C cup. You don't oh, have to wear a bra. Plus. <laughs> yeah. Built-in bra and shirt. Right, right. <laughs> All right. Now, these are going to be open-ended questions, and the ones that got the best answers, the top two best answers, will win? Will win what yeah. we just said. Well, I'm, I'm saying it's a kind of an open question. All right. And the top two best answers are going to be the winners. Are going to be the winners. winners. Right. Mm-hmm. Right? And we're going to be we're going to be watching on the board. So, so this uh, is unfortunately just for the board. Just for the board. We're going to try and figure to, out how to do this so that podcast um, listeners, you know, who download and are not um, available live when we do this. Your cousin can see you blushing. I'm not blushing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Anyway, we'll f- we're going to try to figure out an avenue of how to um, give to, you know, like, non-live people. People, yeah. Down the line. But right but, now, but we're, right we're now, live. We're going. It's live We, we just need to get rid of, I mean, you know, not get well, rid of Well, it opens these. tonight, and, yeah. and we want to get these people out their stuff. And we've done know. a whole promo in the, short, in the shop all week, um, giving away T-shirts and posters. and But we still have, um, they're pretty generous, so we still have some left over. All right, so, so what we're going to ask is, um, no, gee, ghosts are not available for the for the. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we <laughs> just met, we just met people who are who are doing the pre-recorded stuff. Yeah, right. we, that's what I'm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm live. All right, so what we're going to ask is, what can, can you name two, two classic signs of a de- demonic possession? Name two classic signs of a demonic possession. We are. Looking on the board. Necrophiles. Necrophiles. Mm. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that was last week. That was week's last, that was week's last show. week. <laughs> Necrophiles was last week's show, show dear Frotter. <laughs> so okay. we're waiting. So, so you need to give us two two of the classic signs. Of a demonic possession. We're looking for some of the odder signs. Some of the more more the more think, interesting just things. Think back to the, the Exorcist. The Exorcist. Think, maybe. Look back. Yeah. And, come on, we're waiting on the board. <laughs> That's close. Okay. No goggles. <laughs> I know he's saying no Googles. Oh, oh, no googling. It. That's right. That wouldn't oh, be it's fair. Two O's, right? No Googles. Yeah. No, no Googles. Go- no Google. Don't Google it. Two signs. 
Two signs. You have to give us two signs. Okay, we've got one. Cussing and growling. Ah. That is... So we got... Uh -huh. But I cuss and growl all the time. <laughs> but you, you, you are kind of possessed. We're looking oh, at that's true. Okay. okay, Prince Price? Yeah, I like the cussing and growling. Prince I, Price? Me too. I want one more. Come yeah. on. <laughs> I like that one too. You're well, that doesn't really happen. Cussing okay. and growling? Okay, but don't think literally. <laughs> don't think literally the exorcist show. But cussing and growling. We've got our first winner, Prince Price. Mm -hmm. Come on, guys, there's, two. There's one that the church will follow. Ones that churches will follow. Come on. Prince Price won one, 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 one because cussing and growling that was is, is one. one that the church... Oh, there it is. We got it. We oh, got it. Yay! Okay. Yes. Speaking in tongues. Tongues. That's what okay. we're okay. As well as cussing. So Prince uh, Prince Price and Arca Toothis. That's right. Just won the two things. Now, Prince hey, Price actually... He's a customer, right? Mm -hmm. In the store? I'm not sure. Uh... If you are. Uh, Arca, if you're a customer, let us Arca, know. Arca, Arca, and Arca. Pri and Prince, could you do me a favor? Vicky is going to actually. Oh no, no, uh, you, yeah, we're done. We got it. Yeah, we got it. We got we have, winners. We have reached our quota. Epileptic life seizures. What's yep. about? Okay, yeah. we've got it. What Vicky's going to do is she's going to now private chat you guys on the thing to get your addresses so we can send it to you. You'll see a little tiny tab up here underneath. Your uh, your uh, chat board. No, go back and pick a choose oh, private it. chat, and and she will um, Arcus. There he is. And private chat, and she's going to private chat you, and she's going to get your address, and if you want the small shirt, you have to let us know. Yeah. But we do have winners. Yay! Yay. That was pretty good. Can't go wrong with that. So yeah, we can't. Freestyle. It took them a while. They were I, like, uh, you know, uh, I was like, uh, I'm like, what? Uh, reasons why you have to send your grandma to your neighbor's house. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, just to let you guys know, on the postcard it did say dramatic changes in personality, uh -huh. sudden negativity towards religious objects, self mutilation, violent acts, speaking in a foreign language, strange noises, such as scratching and growling, the vi uh, vivid nightmares, bruises, welts, or injuries on the body. Obsessed with books on the movies, uh, on 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 uh, on occultism. on on occultism and Satanism, mm -hmm. and abil and able to contort their body in unnatural position possessions, so cussing and growling and, and contortion. Let and me read this thing because I, so far you have named everything I do on a regular basis, <laughs> and I don't think I am possessed. <laughs> Maybe it's just being myself. <laughs> <laughs> Embryo says the board is ahead of us now. Um, the board is not ahead of us. The board is actually 20 seconds behind us. Ah, <laughs> and counting. <laughs> and counting. But we did get, we did get two Excellent. winners. Excellent. How, how fun was that? That was actually very quick. I was surprised. I, I, I was too because it was like, oh. Uh, That's what we're going to do. Are you sure people are going to remember how it's like to be possessed? Ooh, <laughs> almost knocked my headset off. Stop beating the microphone. I didn't ask for it. I'm oh, sorry. I need to hiss and, and, and growl a lot more. Maybe. <laughs> all righty. So while Vicky gets all that, we're going to start into sex magic. Yes, yes. And uh, the first thing on sex magic, because yeah, we always take a topic, then we teach. You know, right. the, you know the setup yes. of, the, of yes. the show. Um, so the first thing we need to do is we need to set a goal. Mm -hmm. What exactly do you want to achieve with your magic? What are you going to focus this build up? And ultimately, the fi final release on your goal can be any attainment, a new job, prosperity in business affairs, a pleasant or new house, whatever. Your goal can also be healing of yourself or another person. It can, your intent can also be an improvement of an existing relationship, an attraction of someone new. You may even wish to further develop or develop or even begin to develop, develop uh, several qualities in yourself or create an excellent artistic piece. You may wish to embrace the inner lover to establish a stronger connection with your higher self. See, a lot of people think sex magic is just to attain love, and it isn't. It or is just everything. attain a sexual interaction Action. with individuals. And yes. it's not. It's, it actually is a whole philosophy in itself. It is. And, and it's a shame because there you go say sex magic and everybody giggles. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, no, I, it's actually, it's, I, you know, I tell my students there are, there are two really high energies out there. Mm -hmm. Hatred and anger, which is rage, mm -hmm. and sex. 
and you know what? They all and, and in the bi- actual physical body, they're both the they're, same. they're the same they're chemicals the same. that go off in your body and your brain to have those feelings and emotions. Like they say, the same um, the same chemicals in your body that's for love and hate. They're the same. Yes. When you love somebody, you have the same little spurts in your body, that, that little blush in your face. And when you mention her name, they're like, oh. And then when you hate someone, that's the same. Ah. It's all the same energy. It's just driving to different directions. It is. It is. And so uh, you may even wish to, and here's where a lot of people get, get, they don't understand. You can actually charge an amulet, talisman, or a magical tool using yeah. sex magic. I wish because I thanks for that. Boom. That, the energy that just goes right into yes. it is something else. Um, I, we're just okay. reading something along we're here. Read, I'm sorry. <laughs> Vic's going to figure it out. Now, um, if somebody asked me what about love as an energy. Love as an energy is great. It cannot have that intensity of release. Mm-hmm. You can't. You can rage and then release that rage. Yeah, you love can. is like the buildup. Love is like the buildup. You can get the sexual energy and release the sexual energy mm-hmm. in, in the form of an orgasm. Yes. But love is something that goes deeper, and although it's a strong and intense energy, it cannot be used as a singular magical act. No. It's om- it's like it's it's part of the of the elements necessary in order for an execution of some sort. You know, you have like a, a, a love of oneself, a love of certain um, views, a love of a want of something else. It's just the basis. And then everything else that's added to it is what makes it and, and executes it to be anything else other than I have to love myself and feel the power and strength within myself in order for my subs to feel the strength that I am a powerful being for them to right. listen to. If but I in, don't in care for-, for myself in that way, they will not respect me. Right. In the but in the form anymore. of a magical working of a pow type energy, yes. love doesn't work. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It, it's too. So- it's an intent, but it's still too soft. It Plus, is. it's too hard to let go. Because and it's it, very personal. personal. It's like letting go of your and, blood. And, right. It's and, yourself. And, and the, the idea is, is to actually put the energy out there in one go. Yeah. You wouldn't hold on to rage. No. And you can't, well, you can hold on to an orgasm, but only for so very long. A couple seconds. Couple <laughs> seconds. <laughs> if you're lucky more. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, yeah, no, the love energy wouldn't, wouldn't be the one that, that you could run mm-hmm. with. Now, um, so you've got, you can charge an amulet, talisman, magical tools. Then you then create something that makes it possible to concentrate your goal on during the ritual. Uh, this can be a short affirmation, a picture, a talisman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, during the ritual, you repeat the whole affirmation. Mm-hmm. Uh, another possibility is to reduce this, reduce the infor- affirmation to a word that covers its central idea. This will be your magical word, yes. just like you have your little magic. Your phrases of, of, of obedience are like magical they phrases. They are my magical phrases for um, that person, yes. You know, you like, for example, any affirmation of um, I'm going to be successful mm-hmm. can become success. Yeah. I request the universe to send me a possible lover or partner becomes lover, partner. Um, direct. Direct. Be direct. Higher self. So on and so forth. I think sometimes people forget that magic yeah. is really like to the point. To the point. All the extra fluff that you hear people say is necessary is not, not necessary. necessary. You're actually the confusing whole, up the, the whole sequence of how things are well, supposed you're not, to and you're, and you're giving energy to other words. Yeah, and those that words are nothing. not even important. I want to be... Okay, you got... We, that you is want to be assumed. What? That is assumed. Mm-hmm. That is assumed because you're saying it. So, I want to be successful. Okay, I want to be assumed. Successful. That's to the point. The Put all the energy into the point. Uh, I tell people when they they say, "How come you don't have an answering machine anymore on your cell phone?" And I tell them, "I don't have an I don't have an answering machine on my cell phones." This simply, very simply, because I only listen to the first two seconds of what you're going to say to me anyway, <laughs> and then I race the message. If you and everybody always starts out with, "Oh, um, hey, hi, <laughs> this is bye." Mm-hmm. Erased, and it used to drive Vicky. Erased. She go. You don't even know what they had. Doesn't matter. They had two seconds. It must not been that important. Must not been that important because they decided to say play the whole. Hey, hi. Yeah. Uh. And and the thing of it is, is I gotta be honest with you. Get to the point. Yeah. Get to the point. And that's how the magical realm is. Believe it or not. The universe. The universe is not gonna sit there and wait for you to go. Oh, hey. (laughs) Hi. Remember me? 
dude, it guess is. what I want? No. No. The universe is like, look, what do you need? Yeah, the universe is like, <laughs> I got I'm things done. going on right now. I have spring in one country going. I got summer somewhere else. What do you need? Yeah, what do you need? What she do, doesn't what have what time to listen to want? every. You know, the, the, and what it is sentence. is it's walking past you, and 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 you remember in the military, it was, uh, you couldn't go in and go, oh, sergeant, can I have? A, what do you want? Yeah. What is it? And I, but you know, I built weapons, and it was like, what? You know, they walk by and go lunch, and I go fine. Yeah, that's it. Every everything's a one word and, answer. And, and every and and you know, civilians think I'm rude now. I think I'm highly rude because that's not my job too. I'm like, no, I'm just being direct because you know what? In the service, you don't have time because it's all about life. Yeah, the life and death situation. Life and death situations don't have a sense. And they tell Vicky, they tell Vicky, <laughs> she's she's terse and she's and she barks orders. Now I just bark single words because t- technically I've got like. Vicky and I have at least 30 things going at any given time that mm-hmm. need to, need us to get to. At the end of every day, we can be guaranteed 15 of them don't get our attention. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and customers get mad because I go to the point. And they go, okay, so it started when I was like nine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we know this issue. What is it so I can fix it? Fix it. <laughs> You're here okay. for us to fix it? Tell you what it is. <laughs> issue, goal, pertinent. attainment. We just like put in the details. Deals, right? Mm-hmm. And they go, okay, yeah. Um, uh, somebody said, Shimmy is like that with candles. <laughs> I am. It's like, and they're like, I, when I was dying, no, what do you want? Yeah, money. Okay. I, okay, what do you want? And, and they start telling me a whole story. And at the, and I'll inter- at the very end of it, I look at them and I go, so, protection. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, I do that too. And then they look at you and they go, oh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. When guess you, once you, once you that's the reason that why way. I send emails. I even have it on my list. I'm like, I don't even bother anymore. I just go, I emailed you what I wanted. And, and I'll just stay sheepish in a corner and you're like, ah, oh, that oil from last time, I'll, here, yeah, here. <laughs> in and out the just door. Just tell me what you want. Right. And, and the thing is, is literally, we yeah. have 30 things to get to. Yeah. We are going to legitimately get to 15 of them, which means tomorrow I have 45 things to get to, exactly. and the next day I have 60 things to get to. And and when you play that game, you lose you lose, you lose lose not only the focus of the practitioner, but you lose the focus of the universe. Yes. I would like, you know, to be, like, totally successful. It's successful. Just say successful. Mm-hmm. Get the key word, power words, especially in mm-hmm. sex magic, because mm-hmm. you have a couple of things going on during sex yes. magic, and you've got to be your very mind, precise. Your mind, your body, and, 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 and they got to start working. they got to start working together. Now, um, it, you can do this with the visual, visualizations of the new created reality. It can be a drawing of what you want. It can be symbolic of your desire, a tarot card, a rune, a sigil, an astrological symbol, a, a photograph, a con- a, a, any combination of the, a, anything above. Okay, and next you've got to prepare your working space. So clean your space where your ritual will take place. Um, you can, put, of course, you know, it's a personal thing, so... You may want to decorate it with some candles, you know, get some incense burning, um, uh, perhaps some gemstones, and anything else you find appropriate. So if you're going to be use symbols or or other pictures, make sure that you can see them during the ritual Mm -hmm. because you're going to use them as a point of focus. Um, If you want to play some music, don't forget to put on the repeat button. That way nothing you know. kills it as fast it's, it's, as, oh crap, I gotta put Yes! Yeah. It's like <laughs> a DJ for <faux> pop. <laughs> it's a terrible distraction. Oh. Right. Um, so, um, okay. So close the door and take the phone off the hook and turn off your cell phone. Duh. And you basically just close out, tune out any other distractions. So, because you want to create an atmosphere that will allow you to concentrate, um, both on the magical, you know, the magic, the magic that you are raising, and your your ability to create a magical space that will allow you to raise and maintain that certain amount of build up prior to the release. So, you know, it's like. Yeah, it is because you want it. You want it. You 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 you're want to have everything. You're setting up your parameters. Yeah, you're building up your 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 goal. Yeah, and your goal, and you want to concentrate that, that energy into that space. Yes. To make it the most potent, the the most high vibrational energy you can summon. You know. In my altar, I have some of the gifts that were given to me by other subs. 
um, friends that I watch and make oils and candles for. Uh, I also, like if they made me something like, oh, I know you like flowers, so they give me De, you know flowers I let them dry and if I'm doing something for them and per se like I'm making a candle for them I'll put their stuff on the altar mm -hmm. along with other <laughs> things that are offerings from individuals as well I'm just beating the crap she out of talks, this microphone she talks with the hands I have all my hands splitting everywhere just like <laughs> um, well, you're Italian now I'm all sorts um, <laughs> but um, and and that helps me center my my myself right, it right. makes me feel because I'm an important person, individuals mm -hmm. give me things to show that they care and love me. Right. I'm able to give and care and love them and yes. whatever that is that they want. Like I mentioned to you earlier about my friend who needs a cleansing mm -hmm. because she's a change of her life. Mm -hmm. She went through surgeries to lose weight, but she still hasn't felt herself in herself. So I'm like, well then, let me give you something that when you clean yourself every day, you're cleaning away the negative thoughts that mm -hmm. you have of yourself. And help align yourself. And help you know? align that who you are yeah, now yeah. so that you could be the person that you want to be tomorrow exactly. and a day later yeah. and so forth. And and that is necessary. It is. It is. The next step you want to do is you actually want to clean your body. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And since we're talking and, and about even, that. And, and yeah. even if you're going to, if it, even if it's... Um, Magical soap to ass. <laughs> <laughs> even if it's just going to be, even if it's just going to be a solo magical act, yeah. a sex magic act, clean your body. Mm -hmm. uh, it, while bathing or showering, you can visualize the water washing off all mental, emotional, and physical dirt. Mm -hmm. See yourself as ritually cleaned. That's true. Relax for a while. Don't don't try to you know don't make this a hurried thing. Uh, take some deep breaths or meditate a little. If you do magic with a partner, you may want to sit opposite of each other, hold hands, synchronize breathing, mm -hmm. or inhale while your partner exhales. Try to get a polarity. Do a banishment. Mm. It's very important to visualize a strong circle protection that keeps all the unwanted energies out or do any banishment that you prefer, but, you know, before you start the ritual. Definitely. Now, um, we do have a, coming off of this, we do have a question in the chat room for you, uh, Miss Mina, and sure. that is, is it common for a sub to eventually become a dom? Yes. Um, most submissive individuals, they're in the they're the second to middle stage, meaning you have slaves, you have subs, you have switches and doms. That's like the general main placements before you go into your own personal whatever you want to decide yourself from being. And a great deal of doms I've met in my interaction, um, not just for training purposes, but also for their own personal, I guess you can say, uh, growth and uh, structure. They were and are subs in some form of another. Mm -hmm. And then they built within that part and perfected those things that they're able to be better doms in their particular submissive roles. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a service person, ha, again. Mm -hmm. I've, I've done nurses' assistants. I did the military. Um, I work doing um, mentoring and counseling couples that one or two of the parties are into the lifestyle. Maybe one of the other two of the parties aren't, and they want to be able to stay on the same path with their partner, so therefore they're allowing themselves to be involved in certain things mm -hmm. that they wouldn't be just because they want to keep the connection. Right. Um, with those type of things, um, they they are putting themselves in a submissive role. They don't know where they're putting themselves into. They really are taking on the guidance of an individual that knows more about something that deals with their body, deals with their mind. Um, I think that is a good thing. Um, I'm not saying that you have to be submissive in order for you to be a dominant individual, but um, from my personal interaction, and I'm only speaking for myself, I have met individuals from different countries and different states who I consider to be alpha dominant individuals. I even consider myself that. But we all have one particular thing that we are humble towards, that we have no com no problem saying that in our time, in our life, we were submissive of, or still are. I love serving others. That's why I have a job in my day life that I'm not a boss, that I get to help a bunch of people. Because when I get home and outside those the, the office door, when I clock out, I'm in charge of myself and everything around me that touches and comes near me. Right, and, and that is a great deal. It keeps you humble. It also keeps you in ta and, and, and tied into your submissives, knowing that one point that you have something within yourself that you submit to. Yeah, excellent. James asked us, uh, and Frauder answered it, but just to reiterate, so for success and first honors in university study, I focus on the word success or honors. Honors, mm -hmm. it would be more mm -hmm. specific. Mm -hmm. So don't, if you can get more specific than, say, success. Yes, just jump to it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Jump right to the more jump specific word. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a music break. And when we come back, Vicky's going to tell you how to do the ritual. <laughs> 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 
We'll put in the mood music. I feel like I'm being set up. Here. <laughs> and, to, and to actually to actually set up Vicky's ritual, we're going to listen to Lords of Acid. I sit on acid. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, come here. Fuck me up deep.
<laughs> we had taken that time uh, for that song. <laughs> to, 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 to try to get Vicky to do sound effects during the next part. I have a feeling I'm going to have, I'm going to be accompanied by various sound effects. We brought in our own Foley team. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, right? I've got two brilliant Foley artists right here with That's me. That's right. Uh -huh. High five to the bleachers. <laughs> Peanut gallery on, on hand. Let me go get my sandbox and bring over my toys. <laughs> Seriously? Vicky, can you tell us how to do sex magic? Yes, I can. Oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to blush. <laughs> All right. All yours. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you know, we're acting like little juveniles here. Let's just... And it is a serious performance. Yeah. Eh? It, it's the fact that, A, when you're doing it, it is more serious than yeah. when you're reading it on the radio and and, and you know your voice is going to go out forever um, recorded across the waves throughout the world. Yeah, it's just that last song set the tone for us. I know we were like, we were over here dancing and singing parts <laughs> of it. Like, yes, we're definitely getting into this part of the actual game And, and here. the thing is, is that we are, uh, uh, it, this is, it, it's, a lot of people don't talk about the actual ritual part. They'll be just like, well, and arouse sex. yourself and be done. Yeah. But go ahead, Vic. You're going to tell us step by step how to arouse ourselves and, and what to do with everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard because we both just, uh, Miss Mina and I just sat back and just looked at Vicky with big smiles on her face. Like, go ahead. It's all sorts of Christmas over here. <laughs> it is. It's like Christmas. <laughs> okay. So if you choose, work with an affirmation. <laughs> stop. Mm -hmm. Just stop. Mm -hmm. Arouse yourself mm -hmm. and all your partner mm -hmm. by any sexual activity you wish to use until you almost reach orgasm. Meanwhile, keep on repeating the affirmation or mantra. You can say it out loud or repeat it silently. When you're at the brink of orgasm, back off by stopping all genital stimulation. Da, na, na. Stopping da, na, na. all pelvic movements and <laughs> just stop. None of us are looking at you. Yeah, yeah. we're all looking into several corners of the, right. of, of the When of the you're at room. the brink of orgasm, back off by stopping all genital stimulation, stopping all pelvic movements, and relax the muscles in the pelvic floor. Breathe deeply and concentrate even more on your mantra. After a while, build up more excitement, backing off again just before the point of no return. This way you build up a great amount of sexual energy, magical energy, and deep erotic sensations. You may reach a state of sexual trance. After several times coming close, you wish to sweep all your intent into the universe and allow orgasm to happen at that point. Here comes the most important part. Keep an affirming, keep on affirming during orgasm with full mental concentration. Vibrate out loudly your magical words and don't mind the neighbors. Oh yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> I think they probably live for it, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so take care. If you lose focus during orgasm, you will have had great sex but no magical ritual. So it's really important to maintain yeah. a focus. And it really takes a great amount of discipline and control to pull, you know, go move forward and pull back mm -hmm. that ebb and flow of the energy to um, to the point where you where it reaches a, reaches a crescendo, you mm -hmm. know. So you at that point you've built up a huge amount of really potent energy. And, and the thing is, is a lot of people will lose the focus. And, yeah. And, and you can be affirming through the whole yeah. thing. But if you lose focus in the middle of it that orgasm, everything. You're oh done. my it's, god! It's it's like, gone. I hate it's that. gone. I, yeah. It's nothing. I mean, rarely does anything compare to the amount of energy that you can raise at this point. So you want to be very, very focused, um, and then you're going to be releasing it into the universe. It's like um, vibrating the most powerful, potent, magical word you could think of. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's um, it's a really full-on work, and it's it, it, the results are really incredible. So. 
so basically, um, just to finish off, I mean, I'm not sure where I left off on. But, Continue. Um, you you want to? Okay, so they've had their orgasm. Yeah. They've kept their focus because that is. I, you you can't say that enough. You have to keep yeah. the focus and affirmation going. And I think if that's you get some lost into the orgasm, time orgasm right. it's because of that exact right. reason. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, it can either stop your orgasm, or you can you get so wrapped up in the orgasm yeah. you, lose you lose your, everything else. Lose your so oh. if and if you could both, I mean, if you're um, doing this with a partner. It's always best to be in sync, yeah, because you both want to release at the exact same moment. Mm -hmm. You know, you may need to practice this beforehand. Oh, darn, we're gonna have to <laughs> try this three times a day, sweetheart. Oh, what a pity. Um, but but the, we can the, practice tonight, but the <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, but the object is is to um, release at the exact same moment. Otherwise, if you know for some reason you guys can't do, they just do solitary. You know, do some solitary work then, or at least you know, continue the ritual yeah. until both have or orgasmed. Yeah, I mean, yeah. don't leave one. Oh no, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I mean, yeah. unless you're, yeah. You know, Is it possible course. that um, a reason why individuals who might practice this particular method? Um, the reasoning of them not necessarily, I guess you said, meeting at the same focus point at the you end know what? is because they're not comfortable with themselves yeah. or have yet channeled themselves sexually. Yeah. Oh, yes, you know, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. they need to do some personal, maybe um, ritualistic maybe right. masturbation or right. maybe self of uh, fulfilling uh, right. fulfillment in order for them to be able to be eye and eye with yeah. their partner. And it is, and, and yeah. Arca, yeah, there are various types of yeah. positions for the focuses. Yeah. However, in, in, in the case of just starting the sex magic, don't worry about positions so much yeah. because the positions are more for the chakra points to mm -hmm. be open. Exactly. But during sexual orgasm, the root chakra is open anyway. Yeah, because mm -hmm. since that's where it's all going to stem from. Or well, in your sacral chakra your as well. Yeah. Basically, uh, pretty much your your, root, the, the, the chakras that, that contain the most yeah, energy and, are open anyway. And, uh, and it doesn't it, matter and what, a lot in of yoga. It, a lot of it's actually going to come from the sacral chakra. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, um, and it is possible to do, like, for you and your partner to do two separate works. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. You don't have to have the, the same goal. If you have the same goal, goal great, mm -hmm. but you can both have a different goal. Okay. Um, you know, but still utilize that, that, that united energy, you know what I mean, to send forth both, both works. So, okay. Um, Jimmy? Hold on, someone's asking about a time thing. Um, so, now there's another way to actually do the uh, ritual, and that is you can do it by visualization. Um, and start, instead of doing the mantras and that stuff like that. That works a lot for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you start with visualizing mm -hmm. very vivid, vividly the new reality. Mm -hmm. See yourself in the desired situation, feel your happiness about it, visualize it as bright and, and detailed as you can. If you work with somebody else, for instance, in a case of healing, visualize their joy and enthusiasm in the new situation. Mm -hmm. When your visualization is complete uh, to your idea, tell your mind that this is your focus, then mentally store it in your subconscious. You start with, you start making love with the partner or, or of course, if you're solo, the masturbation. Mm -hmm. And no longer, thinking, no longer thinking about the visualization at the brink of orgasm, back off. Mm -hmm. Recall your visualization mm -hmm. and breathe your orgasmic energy into it. Continue the rhythm of arousal, backing off several times with the visualization in mind. Just before orgasm, recall the visualization again from your mind and breathe and channel your orgasm into it. In other words, as it goes, you breathe life into it. You're bringing it mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Vicky's going to tell us what to do with fluids now. <laughs> yes. So a lot of people will call this Kundalini, yes, sex magic. So just to, just to clear up any confusion, as well. Um, which is like um, a lot of people would envisage the serpent mm -hmm. um, winding around. Is it the chakra points? Yes. Um, yeah, in an upwards manner, because you're going to be expelling through the head, through the crown chakra. During visualization, right. the visualization part of the ritual would be through the crown chakra. Yeah. The uh, the one that you were doing with the mant mantras would right. be going through either the throat the chakra throat. Uh, and the sacral together, whereas the visualization is the crown chakra and the sacral. Or the sacral. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so what did you say I was doing? Oh, the, okay. <clears throat> After sex magic, the sexual fluids of the man and the woman are charged with their magical intent. 
They can etherically absorb this power for their well-being and health through the vaginal walls of the head of the penis. It may be clear that when you use a condom, it is very unwise to stay close together with your genitals. The charged sexual fluids can be used to charge an amulet or talisman by smearing some of the fluids um, onto them. Um, in case your ritual was for, like say for instance, um, a monetary um, goal, you can smear it on a coin or paper money that you had already placed on your altar. And you can also redraw the lines of a sigil for this ritual with, you know, with this, for this ritual with it. So you might have already like one drawn out and so you can just trace it mm -hmm. with the sexual fluids. Um, some people will also um, put some of the fluids um, into like say like a wine or mm -hmm. some other I, kind I of drink. Know. Yeah. Now, 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 let's time out on that, that area right there because there are some warnings that we want to give to people. Number oh, one, yes. know your partner. But, but, yes. that, but that, of course, is, yeah, you have to be responsible. So, well, know your partner. Yeah. If you have a sexual d disease or, or could have a sexual disease, for God's sakes, don't drink it. Yeah. Please. And yeah. don't give it to someone else to drink. This yeah. is usually done between individuals who are know already each other. in that yeah. path of, yeah. of being. Don't or you ever. can do it with your own fluids. Yeah. And I know everybody goes, eh, but you know it's what? Your it, it, it's your own It's your own fluid. <laughs> and it's sexual and, and it is magically charged yes and 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 if you have a chance that you have a, a sexual disease don't drink it because you could actually make it worse inside yeah. the body and yeah. spread it through your internal you organs you don't so wanna, really i want you to spread, know that don't yeah. spread the disease again. don't spread yeah so i've lost my train of thought um oh so so um we discussed a tracing a sigil and putting it into like a drink or wine, mm -hmm. um, you know, such as wine. Um, also in sex magic, the um, charged sexual fluids have also, um, I think, would you say transmuted? Yeah, it would be transmuted. Into a, like a sacred elixir of life. Yeah, and in, and in, and is in no way dirty. You know, what, some people dirty. consider dirty. No, you know no. what I mean. It's, so. it's, it's the essence of yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when you're undertaking a sex magical work alone, please know that your sexual fluids form a complete sacrament, mm -hmm. or they, they, they now contain one polarity, not two. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. You can still go yeah. with one polarity. Yeah. Just, just know that. Yeah. Uh, you have a question in the uh, uh, chat room. Are there any other ways to perform it if you are a very visual person when it comes to orgasm? I e. In order to orgasm, you have to be focused on what turns you on. Uh, okay, now again, uh, the, the the way I describe to do it, to do it, mm -hmm. the second part, the second way to do the ritual, you can you can spend time meditating on what you want. Yes. Then you can go ahead and you can uh, focus on what turns you on. Mm -hmm. what, and that way you can build yourself up. Then once you're, you're turned on and you're zone. right in that zone, turn your mind back, back to the, the main goal, the main goal, and the right. visualization. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I heard that one thing where if you choke yourself, uh, it's a high. No, no. No, we're not going to. No, no, be, no, no, no. You need to be conscious. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. have to. If you, you deprive the brain of an. Okay, and Oxygen, here's the thing. I didn't. I didn't finish the question or the comment before okay. I jumped in with the answer, and our listeners on a podcast won't know what I'm saying, or what any of us are saying. No, yes. no, no, too. And that is, they asked if we, if you choke yourself just before you die, and having sex, it's like a high to the body, and it can be called the ultimate orgasm. Oh, they're talking about asphyxiation. Yeah, I know. Asphyxiation. They're, they're asphyxiation. About this, sort of okay. Asphyxiation, well, yeah. just for that individual who just put that out there, asphyxiation has that nothing not to controlled. do. Yeah. It has nothing to do with sexual magic. Asphyxiation uh, um, actually is two different things put together. One, you are cutting off oxygen to the brain. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you take a deep breath real hard, real fast, because you got scared real quick, you know that light head feeling? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing, but a lot more detrimental if you try to do it to yourself or have someone mm -hmm. do it to you. You gotta remember, playing around with any type of form of breath play 
or play that requires a lack, lack of oxygen, you, it can kill you. Yeah. Um, we already know individuals um, that are famous and not famous uh, that have lost their how lives. How many? A lot. Like too many. Too many. Yeah. Just because they wanted to explore something they have no control on. Again, you cannot control how much your brain and your body can take less or more of until it's too late. Yeah, and not only that, you start to lose your focus because you're you losing do. oxygen. You're no longer out in yeah. the focus at all because now you're trying to live. Your yeah. body has now gone turned around and mm -hmm. went, oh no, we're rushing to see what's wrong with the body. You have now taken yourself out of the element and yeah. out of the yeah. magic together. Yeah. And, and you can't do that. No. It, it's, it has you nothing to do with sex magic. And yeah. I got to tell you, of your auto asphyxiation is not really a game that someone no. should play with. No. And that's coming from an individual herself that, that has... That you played breath play. I've, I've done and, both and, ends of the candlestick yeah. and a bleed. And a lot of people too. who have done this for like years will, will slip up do, and die. Do, I, do I, I, up. I can be honest. I've up. been on both ends of the candlestick. I've been on one end that I've been hurt and I've been on the other end that I've hurt somebody else. And believe it or not, it's not anything that you want to happen. Mm -hmm. But once it has happened, mm -hmm. you have learned, oh my goodness, how much lack of control right you have when it is happening and when it is too late right just the same way um as if for any type of um play that's outside of the norm or, or outside of comfortability zones when you're dealing with magic you have to not just think about and feel what it is you want to do but you have to be conscious okay. to know that every step you're making yes. is going to the goal and when you have lack of energy lack of oxygen if you're under influences mm-hmm Individuals, you know, they if have, you're drunk, if, if you're, you're drunk, drugged, if, if you're, you're drug, is something. If your you consciousness or or your or your mind being is being um, conflicted by something, you have now taken seventy five to eighty percent of all your energy and tossed it out the window. And now the only thing you have in front of you is the ideal of what it is you want to do, but you've lost the power, mm -hmm. you've mm -hmm. lost the energy, and you've lost the inner core that is trying to get you to your goal. Right. Once you have put a road in front of it, maybe liquor drugs, um, lack of oxygen in this particular situation. Breath work is okay only in the instance if you're controlling your breathing with your partner or you're controlling the breathing to rise the energy. Somebody mm -hmm. just asked us mm -hmm. if birth, breath work is okay causing yes. yourself to hyperventilate. No. no. Hyperventilation, again, takes away your it's control. Yes, yes, it does. There is, there, is, there, is there is a There's a fine line, guys, between breath work and and and, there's a, there's, and destruction there's, there's, to the body. Yeah, yes. there's the point where your body takes over. You yeah, know, your body is now freaking it's, out. It's base survival instincts are going to mm -hmm. kick in, and, and all, that's exactly all, what it all is. control if is going to be yourself, out the If you cause yourself to hyperventilate in order to produce a vision, the vision's not real yeah. because it's really just a, a chemical reaction. Yes, the, of, the of oxygen the brain. to the brain. So and the brain is releasing chemicals, and it's yeah. telling and it's not real. No, the chemicals are being. You may think it's real, but it's not real. It's actually a chemical release. Yeah, that's yeah. your brain being starved of oxygen. Sure. Yeah, it will and, 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 and I don't know how many times people have said, "Well, if I take like ecstasy, will it be better?" No, uh, no, no, because no. you can't control it. No. Yeah, okay. If I hyper, the bad and, oh, and, the and I love, I love the group. There was a group that came in here going off of sex magic. They came in here. And they said, "We're going to do a goetic working with demons." Right. And what that. we're going to do is we're going to give everybody acid. That way they can get their visions. Right. Number one, acid is rat poison. Yep. <laughs> it, it, it bores you are, holes into your brain. Yes. You, know? you are not having a real vision. No, you you're are having, having hallucinations. hallucinations. You're, you are uh, wa basically, in a sense, watching the destruction, the destruction of, of, your your brain. Brain. of your brain. Yeah. And now you're going to you know? call up a demon in the meantime. Yeah. yeah. That's just a no-no. So have no control and call up, up a, a demon, demon that you can't yeah. control. Let that the games begin. And, and, yeah, that's and, and the same thing is, is with hyperventilation. You're not having a vision. You're having a hallucination. And your hallucinations are usually patterns of panicking. Your body is basically telling itself, warning, warning, warning. something's right. going on and, and, and we don't know or, what or to do. Or it's something that's suppressed in the mind or well, some type trigger. of... trigger. Yeah, and, and the thing of it is, is that you can't trust those visions. And they no. go, yes, I can. And I go, no, no you, you can't. can't. They're not real because mm -hmm. you are not in control. And you some cannot, of those visions could be negative, uh, hidden signals within yeah. yourself that you've yet. You to cannot reach. create through better, through better living, through chemicals, yeah. any type of magical work. Uh, there is no shortcuts to no. it. You can't. 
you just gotta do what you gotta yep, do. Yep, melts and bolts and berries, kids. Yep, and, and and breathing is fine if you're gonna control it in and out to match your partners or to go to just the opposite of your partner. Your partner, even if you're both of your part, even if yourself and your partner happen to be under the influences of some sort of substances, you're still not having that energy. No, you that think you might be. You might be thinking, well, that orgasm was great when both of us were on E. I said, what you were doing was having a physical reaction because your body was having a physical yeah, reaction. Correct. But it had nothing, it had nothing to, do. to do with the with the actual action itself, which exactly. was the sex. And 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 yeah, it is. Um, it, it's it's. And I'm glad that we were asked that. Yeah, because was, that is a good thing. I that's think a good that question. Was a very important question. And, and here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know we're supposed to end at nine. The great thing is, is it's nine. We don't have anybody behind us. Vicky and I are part owners of the station. Which means we can continue on. Because mm-hmm. we could do whatever the hell we want. Basically. Any time we want. And so uh, <laughs> I, I, we got a lot of people that are asking uh, questions. And this is one of this is a big cut topic. And, and, and it's one that where other authors and stuff have come on to other shows. They've asked, and people are asking them questions. They're answering them in the most vague ways because I don't really think they know what they're talking no, about. They're, they're, oh, the reason why they're answering it in vague ways is because nobody wants to be proven that their method, their personal method, is wrong, is wrong or well, right. I, you know, Which, this it's, author it's that a, I'm talking about is actually, he can't. He, he doesn't want to be proven that he doesn't know. Well, you know what? There's the, the biggest, the, the unknown yeah. is what makes you bright yeah. enough in order for you to see the light. I mean, if it wasn't for the fact that I did, if I knew everything, then again, my brain will stop growing. Right. I will not be able to reach those higher parts of myself or the higher orgasms or higher mental points that I need to be what it is that I am. Exactly. Um, that has to do with anything and everything in life. Right. Somebody just asked us, if, Which would shrooms be bad move in magic? They're it, a whore. It, 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 it depends. I th- it depends. It depends because there are different grades of mushrooms exactly. that can be acquired. And some can be um, ex- really expun- expensive. You yes. have to, okay. You know what I mean? First, the first thing you have to put out there is two types. One is constructive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, the and one is one's destructive. destructive right. One allows the brains to release endorphins that are natural, that are expansive. The other one causes hallucinations and visual impairment yeah. mm-hmm. because of psychotropic uh, chemicals um, that are actually destroying the brain so i mean this is it, it, you have to be very careful on what you're taking we don't it's suggest any taking of any illegal drugs right. however there are people who will say that expansive mushrooms yeah help them in meditations or into cre- yeah. uh, into expanding mm-hmm. their creativity I mean, to course, put things together you know, like sex some, magic and, no no in yeah, some and, and not, you're talking like in some drugs. cultures it's acceptable an acceptable part of that ritual but it is my my, my grandpa a ritual it's, it's not it's just a mere taking of a drug it yes. is a ritual. there's a process there's a they, process they, they've been you building their body in order for them to take it take it yeah, the you natural, gotta, you gotta the natural build chemicals that they're yeah, bringing you gotta in. build it they've been yeah, eating and take. sleeping a special way right, right. They have, they've been they've been living a certain way that their body ritualistic and ceremony prepared yeah. not yourself. not i'm sitting in front of the tv watching let mtv you me take a couple of throwing them on my pizza Exactly. You prepare yourself <laughs> mentally and physically for that journey. Yes. And you ha- um, and that's that's the most important part is the preparation that you're right. right. And you that's why so the right. ritual mm-hmm. is preparation. Your whole the ritual itself and the ceremony of the ritual, the ninety I want to say ninety percent of it for me is preparing for the execution of what it is I desire. Right. If it is a person setting up my altar, having the right elements out in a certain pathway that I want it on my altar, me breathing a certain way, me wearing a certain thing. Yeah. I have a certain piece of clothing I wear when I work. Mm-hmm. And it's something I sleep in that night just so that I can feel I'm still in the workings right. while my candle right. is burning and I'm and I'm out in my own. In my but own if you're gonna use material. magic mushrooms, yeah. first of all, you know, build your, you have know, to know which one you're going. You know what you're going. You, you have to have your, you have your mind and body be physically Prep yourself for first. It. Make it a ritual. Mm-hmm. Or, sure. or, or, I mean, if you're not going to do that, then what you're doing is you're just going to Disneyland and writing It's a Small World. Yeah. That's, that's, that's I, I, knew, much I knew of all, in Australia, I knew of a <laughs> lot of chaos magicians that would pop acid or... Acid's different because mushrooms. acid's a brain killer. I, yeah. I, I know, that's what I'm saying, that would pop acid or smoke some weed or, you know, do some mushrooms. Mm-hmm. And, I, I, and to me, the work was... Destroyed. Sloppy and was shoddy. Was just destroyed and shoddy, yeah. 
um, it, it, it took a real disciplined, you know, hello, crunchies. <laughs> I know, but feeding, the bunny is eating the bunny in mid sentence. I know, um, but the bunny's like but, Kushner knows that, but, like all hungry. Know, but anyway, but what I'm saying is, I think the 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 in in our cult realm, I found that um, the people most apt to do drugs as part of their ritual is chaos magicians. And I'm not talking mm -hmm. about the people, you know, like, know I'm not talking about shamans and stuff like that because that is a ritualistic part mm -hmm. of their process. But they also and that's eat a and live a certain way to handle that. Exactly, and that's a respectful, they've got, a, there's a respect there mm -hmm. going on. Um, but these chaos magicians, um, I don't, I, I, I think they're following spare a little too mm. literary, yeah. I, you know what I mean? I and, know. Um, and the whole destructive yeah. aspect of destroying your sigil, mm -hmm. I think they, they take it, well, the ones I knew took it a little further in destroying the self in the process. Exactly. You know what I mean? Which just, you need yourself in order for you to have any type of end result of your power. Yeah. If you're, if you, if you have any chance you cut off certain sectors, you're not putting all of you into what it is you're trying to execute. Right. Yeah. Maybe sex, maybe magic, maybe both, maybe work, maybe anything in life existence. Yeah. I think sometimes individuals forget that life is one big huge ritual. Yeah. You get up, yes, you start your day. You do what is necessary in order for you to live life in its whatever existence you decide to give yourself. You all come home, you all have your own personal rituals. Maybe putting your jacket on your computer desk, maybe doing whatever it's necessary. But every every day in life is a ritual. It's yeah. a dance of existence. Mm -hmm. And you should see everything that you do in the same way. And it ends up giving you a mm -hmm. lot more respect and a lot more power, mm -hmm. whatever it is mm -hmm. that you are trying to yeah. do. Some, somebody in the room said, said that. You know, the, yeah, you, 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 you refrain from certain mundane activity, like sexual activity. Um, I think she's talking in a shamanistic sense. But she's right. The she's prep into, for certain plant rituals yeah, but mm -hmm. you do. You often have includes to. refraining from There's sexual prep. energy. Yes, there is prep there. Um, a great deal of it. Um, but yeah, as we are talking about the munchies earlier, people asking on the board, we're talking about the bunnies have the munchies, yes. not, not us. Yeah. We, uh, the bunnies are so like wanting chippies. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's past their dinner time. Oh, yeah. They're shoving their little faces through the get, through the bars to try and to lick and up some And it's more of them of, than us. And, yeah. you know, <laughs> we and, might and, be and the thing is, is that the, little one, that the bigger one is actually shoving her face there and she's trying to eat whatever scrounge things are on the bottom of her Aww, cage. No, no. And so, yeah, I, it, there was a kind bit where I actually reached for an old bag of potato chips so that she could have something. <laughs> well, it's not that old. It's yesterday. Yeah. It, 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 it it's still happy. fresh. And it's still, uh, it's we, don't, still we don't abuse our bunnies. No, we, no, we, we don't tell food. them no. These bunnies are well fed. Believe me, yeah. I know. They get so much love from everyone. I love the babies. Um, but now, so at the, so the end of the end, of, yeah, Revmo needs some chips. So one more crunch as Revmo gets a chip. You know we we know we made you know we made the bunny a reverend right yes yeah <laughs> I love it so uh, at the end of the ritual with you end the ritual of the sex magic with a banishment and the heightened energy of your ritual may have attracted astral beings so make sure that you keep them at a distance by reconfirming your banishment you know by visualizing the circle and mm -hmm. saying okay now I'm just done I've let my energy go mm -hmm. it's time to uh, move to the next phase yeah to move to the next phase. Um, that is actually tonight's show. It yes, was yes. a, uh, it was great to have you here. I know this time on a different note. <laughs> a different note. <laughs> I love when we have in studio guests. It, it makes it so much easier, and they yeah. get to stay with us the full two hours. And you're brilliant. You're so oh, articulate thank you. and oh, yeah, so you are. thorough. I, I try my best to explain you know? and express yeah. as much as I can in a little time span because I, I've been that person on my end that. Mm -hmm. It part of the lifestyle, not knowing where I fit, um, and also being a, a cultist myself and a practicing alchemist. How can I combine the, my two passions together right, exactly. without separating them? Because I, think I need all my energy. I think you've in both. done an incredible job. Thank you, so, thank yeah. you, and yeah. I hope to continue so for the rest of my own and everyone yeah. else that I train yeah. takes a little bit with them. I think anyone's lucky to train under you. Thank you, actually, thank and, you. And, and, yeah. And, and yeah, exactly. And and this was a subject that is really not approached by many no we don't even talk about this within our own culture no and 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 even when people come in even you know the sex magicians don't even it really isn't talked about and um 
it was great to have someone so knowledgeable Thank to you. be able to combine both scenes of both very ritualistic uh, natures of ceremonialist and see how they, they're combined because there are so many occultists that are interested in the BDSM yes. and there's so many BDSM that are interested yes. in the occult mm -hmm. and nobody really takes the time to put a show together yeah. and Vic and I thought well let's put a show together and yes. see if we can't dispel some disinformation over here bring to light something that's been put into a closet like it's dirty and or, nasty or actually thrown together and shoved together mm -hmm. and made it oh and this is it because really it isn't mm -hmm. it I have to say just like the, our, our cultist life and the BDSM life it is an onion Mm -hmm. And yeah. each little bit of it is just a small chapter. Yeah, it's yeah. And, and and it keeps yeah. on growing. And as you think you're peeling to the center to 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 the to the very last end, there is no end. Yeah. Right. And it's it's constantly regenerating right, itself. Right. The more you put energy in it, the yeah. more you invest in it, mm -hmm. the more it will grow, and you'll never be hungry. Right. Because exactly. it feeds all. Yeah. At the end. And and, yeah. and, and this is this is two subjects that one people go. <laughs> and the yes. other one, and the other one, they shove into a closet, yeah. and 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 you either have to be so very serious when and you talk about can, it, um, or you don't yeah. talk about it at all because it's taboo. And, it's and I think and it's great dynamic, to sit here. And the dynamics and this dynamics. between the two is not very clear. So no, uh, there's a yeah. lot of vagueness. You've painted yeah. such a clear, concise. And to sit in a dynamic where we were allowed yeah. to joke and, yes. and, and, yeah. and, and but, but get to the it right should thing. It should yeah. be. Yeah. Because it should be the same thing as talking about, so where are we going to dinner tonight, honey? And it is. For some of us, like myself, when I go home in a few minutes, I'm going home to my vanilla best friend and my sub. Yep. And they're both packing my house right now, like two normal people. But I know when I come in, my sub's going to come running towards me like a dog and mm -hmm. wrap their, her head around my shoe. And I'm going to ask if she was a good boy today. And, you know, and it's going to be like that. And I can turn right over to my friend and go, would you like a beer or some water, sweetheart? Guess what? I just saw something really cool at the science convention the other day. And it's the same person. Right. It's the same life. If you see everything that encompasses your being, part of what makes you the strong person that you are in the world you should have you will have no shame in your work you have no shame in yourself mm -hmm. and just like you've told me and you taught me and i can say this about you jimmy and vicky um the the the, the threefold law mm -hmm. if you don't see no guilt in it if you believe in it because you no do, fear no, no guilt no fear no guilt no self-doubt no self-doubt and guess what you live a happier better yeah. life your yeah. magic comes out just the three the magic. that is what it yeah. is and that's yeah. what i had to do in order for me to be mm -hmm. the person i am today mm -hmm. i had to really do that and there's no apologies no for anything no being who you are no. what you do yeah. What, Who else is going to judge you but yeah. you? Yeah. And if you start judging yourself, you already cut off all your mm -hmm. all your power in order mm -hmm. for you to be a magical being. Mm -hmm. And all of us are at one form or another. We mm -hmm. touch each other in a different way mm -hmm. that changes us and molds us to be whatever it is mm -hmm. that we need to be the next day or moment in our lives. I want to thank everybody for joining us live Please. on board. Thank you very thank much you. for... I want to thank everybody who's going to download these podcasts because we have quite, quite a few res listeners who do for, downloads. Love it. For love everyone it. who comes and joins, joins us live. And, and, and it helps yeah. add to the show by asking yeah. those questions. It's always yeah. a, really, yes. love, love a really questions. great um, aspect of the show. It is. It having, is. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you for thank having you. me. That was great. I love we to have like, combine two yeah. things I love together for once. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? I get to talk about it online, Eric. Yeah. <laughs> With people I like. Not in the store as usual. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually going to leave everybody with a wee bit of a, 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 of a X-rated song oh yeah like the other one wasn't like the last one wasn't oh no so that was the a, jam though yeah that was the jam. <laughs> this um this is really the, yeah there's a little bit a little more heavier in the sex magic stuff we're going to listen to comedy christ uh, yes. enjoy the abuse yes. then um what will happen is there will be a um there will be a uh, slight pause in in the music as i stop the encoder for the show and start the encoder for just the music afterwards. Juicy the music, music afterwards is going to be 80s and 90s kind of love mix. It, so. Love it, love it, love it. Stay uh, tuned for that, guys. Stay tuned for that. Um, thank you for joining us on thank PQRN, thank the Paraquest Radio Network. We are happy that they host us and that we're part owners. And mm -hmm. and uh, that's, that's great stuff. So, Combi Christ, enjoy the abuse, people. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> we are we're sitting here on your living room.